Hello. Hello. There's so many of you here already. I know. I think we have 18 folks. I mean, you know, we put Taylor Swift in the title. I know. And people were like, oh. <laughs> people care. Golf better not delay 2GM. I mean, maybe it will. Golf will never. Golf, come on. If you're going to pay us some money to stream on this channel, feel free. <laughs> exactly. You, you know what? Because CBS does not care about Big Brother that I much. Mean. So they'll be like, yeah, let golf run over. <laughs> but 2G mats, we care about we our We care. Jobs. Very much so. Hi, Rama. Hi, Michael Smith. Hi, McKenna. How are we all doing today? Are we still Good. Austin Austin's Marlo. there with his wrench. I almost called him Austin Mahone. Do you know who Austin Mahone is? Yeah, who He was again? like a teen pop star guy who was supposed to be like a new Cody Simpson, Justin Bieber type. Uh -huh. Like he never really popped off. Austin like, Mahone. What did Austin. he look like? He was brunette, like a okay. boy. <laughs> like, I don't know. We don't know how brunettes work We here. don't. Uh, Yazzie's here. Matthew, Tiffany, Ricky. Hi. Big Everyone's a BB person this year. <laughs> Usually every summer I'm just like, oh my God, is anyone watching Big Brother? And everyone's just like crickets. But now like people are watching. So, to which I say, y'all better be watching Vanderpump when it comes back. <laughs> Please. OMG, I can't believe I'm catching y'all live. Ha Welcome, Heather. Hello, Heather. It's very fun here. If you want to catch us live all the time, go to patreon.com slash mats and chat with us on the Discord. It's very fun. It's very fun. Um, last time I was this early was when I was a bird. Is that like an early we bird, bird gets the worm reference? I don't know. It could be. Yako, were you a bird in a previous life? She's like a bird. She loves to fly she away. She loves to fly away. Jeff, hello. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Jessica, Lindsay, Ty. Ty. Wait, I thought big. I thought the whole thing was Big Brother wasn't on because of the golfing. Is golfing over? I don't know. I guess. I appreciate you pausing, Big Brother. Yeah, I mean, it'll, the episode will be on you know Paramount Plus or whatever. You can watch that rerun. Yes. But does Vanderpump have Felicia? <laughs> hey, no. Par hey. B Vanderpump has Ariana, who people are very on board with. Vanderpump these days. Rules also has some racist people who get kicked off the show. I was gonna say they've been <laughs> fired. So the racist people, I, that's very similar to Big Brother in that way. Yeah, There's but, always but a racist. on on Vanderpump Rules, are you watching them show their racism live twenty four seven? No, which I'm like, I don't know. I think that's a pro. I don't really need to see racism in action uh, as a part of my entertainment. Uh, Yazzie will be watching VPR and will be glad to ha hear any commentary you have. Thank you so much. It's fine to double up and watch Big Brother and Matt's at the same time. Wow, brave. Sure. Ooh, yes. How do I find the link? Heather, it is uh, patreon.com slash 2 mats, And then you become a $5 plus patron. Yeah, the link is in any one of our YouTube videos. Yes. Is, the link will be in the info section. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, BB has that in common. It's true. I mean, we'll talk about it, obviously, but I... Was impressed with the swiftness of CBS. Sure. That I will say. Yeah. I do think it, I mean, I have opinions. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh no, Steele is being asked to identify a twink. <laughs> yeah, Austin Mahone, don't know. Oh, that's Wishing true. Wishing the best. He I could be Sean Mendez for all I, I know. think he has since bulked up. So okay. maybe be able to see him. I'm assuming he looks like a Sean Mendez type. Thing. I think he's bulkier. I think he's moved into like a bodybuilding. A body like a like I mean, a bodybuilder or like a twonk. I'm There's gonna a look. difference. I'm actually maybe confusing him with another person who was trying to be Justin Bieber. Okay. I was uh, never like a Justin Bieber in that era. I was just like, I'm not into whatever this style of pop star is, really. I was always kind of just what, like Justin Bieber. Yeah, oh no, I, I think you're right. I think he is in a Sean Mendez kind of phase. That is literally Sean Mendes. <laughs> it's like, not. This is a on. different person. Hold on. Let me see him. Um, oh, he looks nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Heather, for joining the Patreon. That's so kind. He looks like a nice guy. When you think of 1989, what's the first song in your head? Blank space. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I, Jeanette's here. Hi. When I think of 1989, I think of, because it leaked when I had to drive Matt Palmer to the airport right. at some point. Where were you going? I don't know. I don't <laughs> remember. Maybe no you are going idea. to Atlanta or something. And... Um, uh, and so we were like, okay. And you started playing it um, yes. in the car. And so I think Welcome to New York came out prior to the leak, right? I don't know that it did. I think it did. Because we had already heard it before and we knew like, okay, we don't like this song. <laughs> so let's skip to Blank Space. Yes. And so we started Blank Space. Yes. And when we heard that pen click, when I was on the 405 driving mm. you in the car, and we were both just like, oh my God. This is it. Iconic. This is it. This Absolutely. is incredible. Palmer, what are your thoughts on Olivia Rodrigo's new song and thoughts on Steel doing a solo? I love when Steel does solo reactions. My favorite videos are the ones that I ha don't have to do anything for. You so know? I appreciated it very much. I did not listen to the new Olivia song. I want it to be a surprise for me when we have the live listening party for the full album. Um, I've been hearing a lot of varying opinions about it, though. So I'm interested to hear what it is. But yeah, yeah I don't. 
I don't know her. <laughs> it's good. It's fun. I like it. Um, right. I was telling him it is very brutal. Like mm-hmm. it's very much like right. it does what brutal does, except a little more about like an X thing. And there's a little more like melody and like a pre-chorus situation. I love and everything. That. The music video is actually really fun. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so I, I enjoyed reacting to that by myself. You know, I love when I have a little creative control oh, over everything. <laughs> oh, Things Lord. go a little off the rails when it's Matt Steele at the, the thing. helm. He's the more chaotic host, and I'm more <laughs> like, this is what we're talking about. But I feel like the reaction videos, it's pretty much similar vibes all around. Sure. It's just, we're yeah. watching it, we're talking about it, and then goodbye. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good song, Brutal, like, yes, that's all I'll say. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited to hear it. Um, thankfully not shake it off. That's funny. Out of the woods. Yes. Classic. Out of the woods. Oh, Lauren L said clean. I was just listening to Imogen Heap earlier because I went and saw Regina Spector and I feel like Regina and Imogen have similar vibes in my book. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went over to Imogen. I think her second album, Ellipse, is my favorite Imogen Heap album and it's not the one people pay the most attention to. So I just like us all to listen to Ellipse. That's- if we have a free moment, Ellipse is beautiful. It's stunning. It's not... The album that has much to say on it, mm-hmm. but it's just it's it's like if you like the production on Clean, you're going to like the sophomore album a little bit more than the first, which is a little bit noisier, and this is more Clean esque. Okay, all right. Olivia isn't doing it for me this go around. Oh no, oh, no, I like Vampire. I mean, I I will say I haven't like re-listened to Vampire as much as I did Driver's License and Good for You back in the day, but I do like it. Mm-hmm. New Romantics could have been a number one hit. Absolutely, it could. And then I would have been happy for all of you. But Matt Steele is like the number one new romantics hater for no reason. I don't get this. I don't. I don't find the song pleasant. <laughs> I. It just to me, it's so grating. It's. It's how you feel about Twenty Two. Like Oof. that is what new romantics sounds like to oh, me. Oh, I disagree. Like I I'm just that. like something about this. I can acknowledge like it's a well done song. I yes, guess. Yes. But like I, 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 for some reason, it grates my ears. I think it's genius. Um, Austin's is I know places. I know places. That great, is a great song. song. Uh, how was Regina? Regina was so incredible. I mean, we'll talk about it a little on the podcast, but she came out. It was just her and her piano, and she just is so insanely talented. And I'm not usually a person that goes to concerts of people that I don't know their entire discographies, but I have like five new songs of hers that I'm obsessed with now just from going right. to that show. So I'm going to repeat all this once we record the podcast. Don't get mad at me. You guys are getting the preview. You're getting a preview. Yeah, that's Congrats. why you need to catch the live. You got to catch the live. Because you're going to get the preview of the, 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 the meat that's coming. Lindsay, I love Regina. I've seen her a few times. She's excellent live. She's excellent and just like not everyone can fill out a venue like that with just a piano and vocal performance. That's and great. She's so funny and light. She's like she would be. She's like Kelly Clarkson esque, and like she had control over the crowd in like her personality as much as her music. And she's just like a genius. I love her. I love oh, her. my friend Rohita's uh, on the chat. She likes oh, all really? you had to do is stay, which is a song I think. Rohita, I'm about to like mention you on the podcast. Oh my god! When, when we talk about things that we did this week. Hi, Rohita. Thank you for being here. Love it. I actually have a Patreon uh, Regina request. Oh, coming up. Oh, great. I'm excited to discuss it. Um, did y'all have any friends who saw Taylor at SoFi? I, Tim did. Uh, Joe's man, Tim, who Matt Steele is feuding with because of the turning of the cha- uh, tables. I'm not <laughs> feuding with <laughs> They're Tim. They're feuding. And we are not <laughs> feuding. Because no one knows who told the manager at um, Schwartz and Sandy's to turn the tables. It's either Tim or Steele, but there's a feud. This but, is a, this is a deep cut of a story, guys. <laughs> but it's, it's just what it's, I said. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so Tim saw the Eras tour and had a great time. My mom is here. Hello, mother. Oh, hi, Mama Steele. Thoughts on the new 1989 cover? We'll talk about we'll it. We'll talk about it. For the longest time, when people said Image and Heap in reference to Clean, I thought they were saying Image <laughs> and Heap. <laughs> That's funny. funny. Image and Heap and Regina Spectre to me are the same person, like in my brain. They're d- different people, but they both have a similar, <laughs> like, they're like a- acoustic, alternative, a little mm-hmm. bit electronic, early aughts, New York e vibe. Okay, so, so I understand the overlap. So deathmatch between Imogen and Regina, I who would win? They don't seem like deathmatch types. <laughs> I know more of Imogen's music. Okay. But uh I just saw Regina, so I'm I'm in a Regina Hayes right All now. All right. Style, blank space, and I wish you would are peak 1989 for me, mm-hmm. but I love most of the songs in it. To be honest, it's definitely my top five Taylor Swift albums. Super excited for 1989 Taylor's version. Yes, I love style as well. That's a great song. Blank space, obviously. Reputation needs to be at Ty- Taylor's version next. I mean, I think she's putting off self-titled. <laughs> I, think I do she- think the self-titled is going to be last. And um, how much promo is she going to do? For that? I think she's going to try to make it a moment. Okay. Um, but I don't think she cares so much. Okay. Um, Hi there. Just joining. If you haven't talked about it already, would love to hear Palmer's oh, thoughts on Bad Idea. Right. I didn't now. listen to it yet. I'm going to wait until we listen to the album. That's a me move. 
I know. It's, I, that's, that's the thing. I was I surprised do. you wanted to listen to the second single at all. Yeah, because I was like, oh, I think it'll be nice to have a video of me, you know, just by myself. Okay. Doing whatever. So doing this is more about you than Olivia. Yeah, a little it bit. It sounds like. <laughs> it's always more about me, my darling. The two game, we always say we're just like, we don't need guests. It's about us. It is. That's true. That's the whole thing. Is this slowly becoming a Swifty pod? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you like Reputation again? It's not good. <laughs> it's just not for us. I don't know a nice way to say that. Noisy. I'd call it noisy. There's some great stuff on it. There is. We really love Ready for It. Yeah. Um. I I really love King of My Heart. <gasps> Jimmy's here. Hello, Jimmy. Jimmy, hi, Jimmy. Yes. People miss you in the Discord, Jimmy. Just gonna tell you. I feel like she will end uh the records with self-titled the I one agree. that started it all. Sure. Do you think she'll do like a um? She'll make self-titled like she'll be like, hey, I'm changing up some of the production. It's less country and a little more poppy, just to like give it a, a fresh revamp I could to get people excited about it. I could see that. Um, I yeah, I feel like she's all about taking songs like "Girl at Home" that like aren't universally loved and revamping them in an exciting new way. I mean, that's smart. Um, yeah. When are you hiring that <laughs> that intern to make TikToks look? Soon, because geez, Louise, <laughs> I don't want to do it. I we have to. You put up a YouTube short mm-hmm. that I need to put up on Instagram and on the TikTok. And I was so confused as to how to do that short because I've never been one of the ones to upload a short before. Yes. He's the one that always uploads the shorts. I'm like, wait, how do you do this? <laughs> and he sort of had to like explain some stuff yeah. to me. But like, it was fine. It, was it, fine. it looks whatever. It looks. It doesn't look bad. No, it looks great. But it's just like once you've made the original content, reformatting shit. And like putting up the, you didn't even try to do the text, did you? Like the text that I would put. I made the text. On, I couldn't figure out how to do the text that yes. you usually do, so I did the text that like is available on Instagram stories, oh, right. and so it's just it looks a little different. But that's fine. Yeah. But yeah. but it's just like, who has the time to do all that when we make so many fucking YouTube videos? It's like we already did YouTube. Why are we having to do a whole new app? This is why we need to hire a Gen Z person to do this. But we don't have enough money to do that yet. So go to <laughs> Patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> slash two game mad so we can hire a TikTok intern. Uh, I'm the only Zoomer of my friends who doesn't even have TikTok. Oh, wow, Tyler. Look at I you. Ha- it's definitely on my phone. It's on my phone. I, d- I can't look at it. It's. <laughs> I mean, I can look at it and it just is a time suck. It's just like I will just swipe and swipe. And it's like, what am I learning? What have I done? Yeah. Uh, I'm eternally online yet don't have TikTok. That happens. I just... I... We're going to hire someone to do it. But I honestly must say, just by ourselves, we do have like 27,000 TikTok yeah, followers. Yeah. So we're not doing terribly. Yeah. It's just. You did that. I, I didn't did. Do, I didn't do I nothing did. with I, the TikTok. But hey, you did this last one. This next one that goes up is going to be all you. It's going to be all me? Yes. We love that. I'm getting to the point when I'm over social media. Definitely. I mean, same. <laughs> like, I mean, it gets absolutely. to a point where you're just like, I'm exhausted at just like looking at stuff online right. perpetually. And I'm like, what? I have no, so much less energy to post things that aren't two game match related. It's just like. I, well, I can show you the stuff I've. Been. You're gonna get the most of me if you just listen to the fucking podcast or watch our lives of the podcast. You're gonna get even more. Yeah. Everything beyond that, it's like who who has the time? For I know. Who has the time? Jeff equals Juan, Jimmy, and James. Anyone with a J name. <laughs> <laughs> so we're so yes. There's a new theory that uh, Jeff is everybody. Uh, hired an intern named Matt. <laughs> Two and a half Matts. Hey, I would love it if there was a Gen Z Matt out there who's like looking to be a social media intern or whatever yes. and we have money eventually yeah <laughs> <laughs> right that'd be kind of funny i promise i'm not dead to quote pink in 2007 <laughs> what a great song guess jimmy will have to return to set the record straight <laughs> we need a new social media for the people tired of social media i know sometimes the mats are all we need oh that's kind. thank you that's very kind all the mats i need, need. <laughs> great, i don't know why whitney didn't sing it like that what a great song that is! By what now. a great video of her just like and the like the military oh, people. that live performance! An insane. Like people don't sing like that. If you have not watched Whitney Houston perform "All the Man That I Need," and like it was 1990, like I don't know if it was called "Tribute to Heroes," but she's singing for like the army or the navy, some sort of government armed forces. And what year was this? 1990. Okay, so this yes. is even before "Don't Ask, Don't Tell." This was like even before like like. You couldn't even I know. whatever and you know there's and military and, and, and you that. know <laughs> the gay came out of every closeted homosexual in the military Absolutely. that night. Absolutely, but I think at that she's so beautiful as wife. Well. Like the straights were very much like, like, she's she gorgeous. Looks great. She's so beautiful. She looks great. But, but inside they were just like fuck those they vocals. Like, <laughs> <"Slave on my laughs> <guys."> <laughs> 
Well, it's almost Christmas, Yako. You sound like me because I was listening to the fucking Merry Christmas this week. I posted <laughs> on my Instagram because I feel like I see so many people that are like, oh, I wish it was pumpkin spice season of oh, the fall, the fall. It's like, hey, if we can be excited for fall this early, we can be excited. It's true. It is for not Christmas. fall. It it's is not, not fall. fall yet. And so it's if it's not Christmas, to, I can still listen. To me, summer just fucking started, people. It's halfway over. And it's LA. So like it's it like the heat wave has the not heat, even come yes, yet. No, because the heat will be around. In LA, it gets uh, hot and October, as Muna has oh, told us. I was just thinking of that. <laughs> what a great song and a great album. And it's a great question. Why is it so hot in LA in late <laughs> October? I don't know. If yeah. someone can figure it out, that'd be great. I do feel like it has, not to talk about the weather, is that boring? Um, I do think um, that it has been a little less hot in the past like week, week and a half. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like there was that heat dome or whatever, and it's been nice. Yeah. Just got back from Oppenheimer. What did you guys think about it? If you saw it, I saw it a week and a half ago, two weeks ago at this point. I thought yeah. it was great. That's really still. well done. I said on last week's podcast, it is three hours of men just saying each other's names over and over again. <laughs> right. So you have to you have to like take a deep breath every like 10 minutes or so being like, okay, where am I in the plot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like who is doing what? Who is accusing who of what? Like what job does this person have? So you do have to like take a pause and totally. think for a second. But totally. you know. I thought it was great. Uh, yes, I didn't see it. I have no interest. But <laughs> I've heard good things. Matt Steele likes it. I've heard many people like it. But just like three hours of the man who... It's not for you. It's, it's not for me. It, yeah. It's not for me. Uh, there are many great vocalists out now, Halle Bailey, but the girls ain't sweating their faces off like Whitney did in that performance. That's. Oh, yeah. I mean, we love everyone. It's true. But what Whitney was doing at that time... Can, we'll, nev- will never happen never. again. No one yeah. will ever sound that good. Yeah. It's just like stage presence out the wazoo, vocal ability, vocal stamina. Mm-hmm. It's just like how you're not of this planet. Yeah. Otherworldly. I'm excited for the Big Brother talk because y'all were just celebrating that no one was racist oh. in the last podcast. And it's like, did we wish this upon the girls? <laughs> and week one, week it's one. So, that's the thing. It's Iconic. So, and ridiculous. I, we'll talk about it, but I will we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, Oppenheimer was confusing at points, but great performance and cinematography. Oh, great. I yeah. love that. And people love it, but they've done the IMAX and um, 70 millimeter IMAX. There are only so many theaters in the country, and that's how it was shot. Sure. So I know that. I saw it in IMAX. Don't uh, ask me what 70 millimeter means. <laughs> but will Emily Blunt get an Oscar nomination? That? I think she will. Emily Blunt was fantastic in the movie. Well, I, I feel like a common criticism I've heard from my other podcasts is that uh, Christopher Nolan never does right by the women <laughs> roles. Do you do you agree with that, or do you feel like that's an unfair statement? I mean, his roles definitely ha- are male ensemble focused and everything. Yes. yes. Um. So you know, just, I would love to see him have a female protagonist, like at some point. Right. Um. She was definitely a supporting role, but she really made the most of it. I mean, she played a woman who essentially had a perpetual headache the whole time, and she did a great <laughs> job. <laughs> like the entire but time, like, she was just fucking pissed. Is that is that a role? Like, but, is but, that? But, like, I mean, there was more to it, but. Like, it's kind of funny if you if you like think about it too hard because you're just like, oh, she kind of just is grumpy the whole time. <laughs> well, maybe. But that's... she was she was fantastic. She that's was good. she d- really did great stuff with it. And isn't there another lady in that movie of note? Um, Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh was also in it. Oh, look yeah. at me, no my actresses. Great. Yeah. Oppenheimer was haunting and quite the experience. Ooh, haunted. Yeah. Great Beyonce song. Great Beyonce song. Uh, I can't wait till we get to, we're doing on our Patreon uh, reviews of every single Beyonce album. The B-Day is coming up uh, tomorrow. It's going to be released on our Patreon. Uh, but I can't wait till we get to self-titled, Eliminate, and Renaissance again. I just I just am excited to revisit. Excited. Because I like even listening to, B- I'm like, I haven't listened to this album in full. I haven't listened to Beyonce in full in a long time. Like the albums that aren't Renaissance in full in a very long time yeah. and so revisiting them has been a real joy so yeah. I'm so glad we got to 100 patrons eventually <laughs> I know it took us a long time but we did it Ugh, the gratuitous naked Florence Pugh scenes were terrible I know Grace did not like that I thought her scenes were good there, there were a lot of nipples <laughs> Has but you she, know what? If she's like, hey, show them. Then right. If she was consenting, then I, I'm i all for it. Okay. You know. If that's what she wanted, if she agreed and felt like it was important to the role. I have heard that criticism too, though. Is that like she's just naked for no reason? Oh, uh, man. She didn't, need, <laughs> she didn't need to be naked. But if she was just like, hey, I want to be naked. Then right. Right. Be naked. I don't know. Jeff is saying something rude about self-titled. If you had new, are new here, Jeff is the person with the famous, famously... I'll say hot takes because I'm in a good and giving mood. The word will be hot (laughs) and not bad (laughs) for today. I believe today on the Discord he referred to Meryl Streep and Annette (laughs) Bening as being in the category of annoying older actresses. (laughs) Not giving. 
getting called out on the live. <laughs> he definitely did. And I was like, woo! <laughs> I mean, y- yes. And I was just like, don't be talking about my girls. It's just like that. I just, the thing is, I w- what my question was, was like, what makes them annoying? But then it's like, I don't think I want to know the answer to that. <laughs> because it's like, I know he's going to be like, their face. And I'm like, that's not, I can't <laughs> engage with their face is annoying talk. Uh, I'm so excited for the B-Day review tomorrow. Just an excellent album. All hits on the main album. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, is Steele in his tech oh, era. I got my fingers ready. Hey, Matt Steele just put together an Instagram reel and filmed two videos. He did a Chatty Cathy's and a uh, reaction video all on his own. And let me tell you, getting the camera to focus when you are the only person on screen is difficult work. I had to put prop my Carol Channing doll up on my couch. I, I've done that. <laughs> like, I've done that. And be like, okay, Does your I'm camera not, not autofocus? No. Oh. Yeah. Mine does. Yeah, well, great. <laughs> <laughs> Mine does. Great, fucking cool. I'm um, just saying. I mean, my camera at this point is like uh, 11 years old. I was had it for 11 it's, years. It looks great. Like, the video quality looks really Thank good. Did you, you change... This is boring. Did you change the frame Do rate? Do you think I fucking know how to change <laughs> the frame rate? I just am saying, because we've been doing like 59.94 or whatever on yeah. these latest Patreon. I know, videos. they look good. They look great. No, But yours looked like that. Oh, almost. really? Oh, no, it's 29.97. Oh, it's 29.97. Okay. okay. Um, I can look at it and try to change it if you want. Cool, great. Okay. Is this fun? <laughs> <laughs> Is this interesting for people? Discussion of frame rates. Um, Jeff also hates curly haired women for no reason. Let the people know. Well, that part I wasn't. These, the thing is, Jeff, I'd like it to be noted that I did not bring up the exact takes in either situation. I, I think Jeff on the Discord is is not so much real. He is like the man at the back of the plane. <laughs> he is not real. He's more performance art. And so he just says things to get a. a, a a rile but out of I will say, and I don't know who's here and who's not here, but I would say a recent patron who's been added to the Discord has given Jeff a run for his money. I mean, <laughs> I iconic. Keeping us all on our toes because you think Jeff is the take master and then a new challenger approaches. And you're like, oh my. And you know what we love on the Discord. Chal- challengers discussion. <laughs> I was going to say flat out fighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. This is what happens when you leave, Jimmy. Jimmy, the girls want you back. Um, okay. Should we start recording? Oh, do you want? <laughs> let me. I feel like this is too I got stressful it. for you because no. you have to like look behind the thing. I don't know. I like. I got it ready. Am you I, did. I yeah, hit it. Sure. Okay. See, that was easy. It that stressed me out a little. Listen, don't be stressed. We've, we're professionals. We do That's this true. all the time. We are professionals, and we're back again. A whole brand new week of 2K Mads. Can you believe? How, the thing is, whenever I'm uh, putting together the little faux cover art I make for this podcast every week, I'm like, are we really on 217 episodes or whatever the fuck? Of the podcast. Well, we, and we're not even going to get into the YouTube videos no. at all, which is at like 700 or whatever. Right. We do, I, and every time something is added and you add like a new title to the podcast, I'm yes. always like, ah, oh, that's history. <laughs> like it's being added to the canon. I'm always worried that I've named an episode that name before, but I'm like, I'm certainly not going to go back and check. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, check like, that kind of stuff. I'm like, well, maybe this is new. Click. <laughs> I check that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm always just like, have I worn this outfit with Matt Palmer wearing oh, a certain outfit before? I, like, has I there do, ever been an outfit combo I, match? I do that when I'm picking the outfit. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be wearing the exact same thing I've been wearing for weeks. But yeah. I only have so many clothes. But I did actually buy a, an outfit because people were dragging me on the live one week that I was just wearing like a black t-shirt to Renaissance. And I have a fucking new shirt for Renaissance. Oh my god. It's like a kind of faux leather short sleeve but with like cowboy tassels because you know we're doing like a cowboy renaissance theme. A cowboy tassel? what I'm saying. You whore. I know. I'm gonna look <laughs> and I'm like trying to I'm like keep looking up and I'm like if anyone's Fuck. looking at me look at my phone I'm just like metallic see-through tank top for under that and I'm just like I must look like such a whore but whatever it's Renaissance that's the point. It's Renaissance era and if Beyonce's not gonna give us visuals right. Matt Palmer will. I will be giving visuals that day. I mean hopefully it doesn't look a mess. I don't think it well. It'll be cute. I'm and sure you will not be the messiest person there. That we all know. <laughs> all right. Do you want to start? Do you want me to start? Um, you start. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Two Game Match, the podcast. It's Matt Palmer. And it's Matt Steele. And it's a brand new week. We are here in a post-1989 Taylor's version announcement world. And before we get into that, Matt Steele. Yeah. How was your week? It was nice. Yeah. It was fun. I did a few things. I, my friend Rahida, who I think is still in the live chat, um, I saw her in a comedy show oh, at, at Akbar, and she was fucking amazing. Icon. Um, and it was really nice. I haven't been to a comedy show in a little while. Rahida is so hilarious on Twitter. Rahida is amazing on Twitter. Brilliant. And, um, and so it was really fun, you know, 
feeling like, oh, I'm going out like yes. on, a, on a weeknight. Look at you. <laughs> I know. I, I feel like young again-ish. And speaking of young again, I also went out Friday night <gasps> with some of my coworkers. Yes. We went to WeHo. Um, and so I was like, I, who am, I'm a person who like, because I went out with my coworkers like two weeks ago. Right. And I'm going out with them again two weeks yet. Like, this is wild. Am Look I going to be a going outer I person? will say when you decided to get off the apps, uh, you were like, I need to be more social in real life. And it seems like you're doing just that. Yeah, but don't for a second think that I was social to other people when I was out. Baby steps. The, wherever I was. <laughs> like, I was still just talking to my friends. And if a, a creeper when it was like I and me on the dance floor, I was just like, no, thank you. <laughs> trying to like not make eye contact. Because I was just like, I'm here with, I'm here with my people who I know. All right. Yeah. What have you done this week? This week, I similarly went out on a weeknight, which I was proud of. Jackson, very kindly for my birthday, got us tickets to go see Regina Spector. And she played at the Greek Theater. It was uh, Thursday night. And we went, and I generally don't go to concerts with people where I don't know their full and entire discography. So I'm like, I want to know every song as she, let's be serious, begins to play it. And I, so with Regina, I was nervous because I love a lot of her songs from Begin to Hope, but she has a big discography before that and after that, especially. And I'm like, am I going to like not have as much fun because I don't know all these songs walking in? And I've got to say... She is such an unbelievable and engaging performer that it made no difference. I found like three or four new favorite Regina Spector songs that I didn't even know existed. Oh, including damn. There's a song called Us from the album prior to Begin to Hope. And then there's also a song called Eat, E-E-T, which came out, I believe, on her 2009 record. So devastatingly beautiful. I believe I was crying by the end of Eat when Wait, she was performing. Wait, what's Eat about? You have to listen. Okay. <laughs> it's, I, it's like... I can't get into it. It's basically, but I know that the lines that made me cry where it's like, it's like forgetting the words to your favorite song. And it's just like, just listen to the song. It's really beautiful. Okay. <laughs> so I really can't recommend going to a concert of an artist that you know a little bit of their music and like, because uh, that wasn't my vibe before, but I left with such a greater appreciation. Like the Greek theater is not tiny. Like it's a big, it's kind of like a mini Hollywood Bowl outdoor arena kind of thing. Arena is strong. Outdoor theater kind of thing. Uh, and... She filled the entire space up with just a piano and vocal. And you know, deep down, like when we did our favorite male artist performance videos, there's nothing I like more than someone sitting at a piano and singing with beautiful music underneath. And it's like, she's a fucking concert pianist. Like mm -hmm. she's Alicia Keys level, like no joke as a pianist and has such an interesting, cool voice. I just love her so much. It was an excellent concert and I can't say enough good things about Regina Spector. Um, other things I did this weekend, uh, we had a couple of people over on Saturday because Jackson's uh, brother, who lives in Ohio, was in town. And so we uh, had he and his wife over with a couple of friends and other uh, family members of Jackson on Friday. And then I went over to his parents' house yesterday because it was like... 12, 13 people, a lot of people in town staying at the house. And so it was fun seeing all of them. And then today I was so very lazy. I did very little to nothing. But we did go to an open house of a house that was close by that we would not buy because we're not rich. <laughs> but at some point would like to, you know, purchase a house. So we're just seeing what you could get in the area. And it was like a little bigger. The, the main house was nice and very newly done. Uh -huh. And we live in a cool neighborhood. Uh, but it's it was like... The square footage was like, I'd say 200 square feet larger than my current house. It had an ADU and like a little pool in the back. How much do you think? Don't want to think about it. Well, let me tell you. It was $1.6 million. Mm -hmm. And I was like, for this amount of space? Like, I just couldn't. I know that whenever I buy property, it's going to feel like. Because I'm going to buy in LA. I just know I am. And I'm going to feel like I'm being taken for a fucking ride because sure. of how expensive things have gotten is out of control. But seeing it now as I'm like years and years out from that moment is I guess it's like therapy or it's like you just have to get tortured a little bit. So by the end, once the big th horrible moment happens, I'll know that it's coming. Does yeah. that make sense? I know. I think it's good that you've prepared yourself you've for this. You've got to prepare yourself for yeah. uh, an investment like that. And I'm again, years in advance and I'm sure we'd find something that we loved. But today I was just like, woo. And so I went and saw that and took a nap. I was like, I am emotionally spent. It was hot out and the numbers did not add up for me. But now I'm here with all of you. Oh, that's beautiful. And couldn't be happier. I mean, you're such an adult. Like looking at like houses, knowing that like, you know, one day. It's still Lord there. knows I've never done. And I'm not, I like the idea of buying a house is nowhere near the realm of possibilities <laughs> for me at this moment. It's still very far away. But you know, I, I made an effort to start saving several years ago. Of course, ago, and yeah, so which been, is good. My, the savings account is looking good and healthy so there's a world in which 
a home is purchased. Yes. Right? A, a world in which. A world in which. Where that world is, I don't know what don't galaxy know. it's Couldn't in. Couldn't tell you. But it's somewhere. It's oh, there. This week I also did independent, like adult independent things. What was I that? made two gay mats content on my own. Congratulations. I did the, because when he was at the Regina Spectre concert, yes. I was like, well, Olivia Rodrigo is putting out a new song. I'm sure the people would like to see some sort of reaction to it. So mm. I was like, let me set up the camera in my living room and do one by myself. And luckily I was in focus. Yes. I didn't mess that up. I love it. And so that was very fun. I also recorded uh, me and Travis. Uh, if you are a member of our uh, Patreon, you will know that uh, if you are a $10 and over a patron member, then you will get access to our podcast, The Chatty Cathy's, yes. which is where we each like chat with... Uh, it's like one of us individually and we chat with one of our friends. Yep. So this week I chatted with Travis, my roommate, and we had a lot of fun doing that. So like, look at me. I'm I'm about to like venture on my own girl. Look at us. I'm, I am running the world. I'm manning cameras. Yes. I could be president one day. I, I'm now at the age. I was going to say. Where, I'm now could. at the age where I could be president right. one day. Should I run? Could you imagine me being president? No. Or like running for president? <laughs> no. I would get a really, really good running me. Like you I would, would I, I would be like, I would like pick Hillary Clinton to be my my VP because she knows what she's doing. I don't think you have the temperament for it. And I think I want to say that as a compliment. Like I not to say that people who run for president are inherently bad, but I just think it's a type of like unabashed and like focused ambition about this one thing that I think is I don't know that it's healthy, but yeah. I would rather people with good intentions take the role. I just don't know if that's the I have for good you. intentions. You do, but you have the unwavering ambition to be president. Girl, the focus if you see <laughs> See me <laughs> any of these videos, you will know that like the focus, especially in conversation, isn't very direct. <laughs> You, right, girl. You know that I monologue throughout everything. So yes, I don't. I don't think it's for you, but I think you know your heart's in the right place. Yeah, I'd like someone who agrees with you to be president. So instead, I will just register to vote. Yes, and vote as every all, chance I get, as we all should. Yeah, vote. vote and That's vote where blue. this conversation was leading to, <laughs> to, to reminding was. people to register to vote. Hey, and they should. Yeah. Uh, are we ready to jump into the news radio? Let's go. The people are dying to hear this story. <sighs> I mean, even I don't, though they all knew it was coming, I don't know if anyone was expecting it this soon. I mean, this I, is right we, after Speak Now. I certainly wasn't expecting for Taylor Swift to announce that 1989 Taylor's version, her next re-recording, will be released on uh, October 27th. She announced this at her final show in LA. I think. I think it was the end of her the first US leg of the era's tour and it was on August 9th so 89 a lot of the Swifties were thinking oh she's gonna announce she's gonna announce but with the Swifty theories you're like I can't tell if you're being like a QAnon person or if this is real but you guys got this one right now this you were on point with to quote Phaedra Parks um uh, she released the uh cover of this and it is her smiling big uh, it had it has text in a way that the other covers do not. Yeah. 1989 is in kind of a white. It's almost like written in like a big marker. Like that's a, like a little paint, translucent like a paint type of marker. paint that when you if you're painting on a wall at a, a boardwalk. Totally. You say? Taylor's version in like not no shade a papyrus esque font in black all caps above that and then there the are fact ver- that you know what papyrus font looks like. Oh, you would know if you, if you saw it. You <laughs> the would the fact know that papyrus. You know the name of it. I mean, you're a font girl. So. I mean, you know how I feel about fonts. Yeah. Uh, and then there are some seagulls flying in the background. I. Sure. Is it my favorite cover of hers? Is it my favorite Taylor's version cover? No. But I also feel like the discourse around the cover has been a little it's very weird. intense. Like yeah. it was like when I saw the Speak Now cover and I was like, oh, I think she looks like a soap opera actress. I don't love it. And then like I went on with my day. Like, I don't know. I feel like the discussion of this cover and like how it could be made better and like listen, what's wrong listen, with it. Listen, do you think any Swifty is ever gonna go on with their day <laughs> I when don't. Taylor breathes? I don't. And no. I understand it. As a Mariah stand myself, I get it. But I I'm excited for this, and my issue is in no way with the cover. It can be whatever cover she wants. I support that. I need to know who's producing the songs. I'm very concerned. You know how I feel about the Max Martin songs that were reproduced on Red. Just pay the man his money. You've made so much money on the Eras tour. And you've given bonuses to all of these people that low, like I think total up to like $15 million. Max Martin Martin is not going to charge you $50 million to reproduce these songs. I cannot hear a like, you know, faux karaoke acoustic version of Blank Space. I just can't have it. Yeah, we want the songs to have the same punch yes. that th- they had when Max Martin the same, produces. Because mm, yeah. you listen to We Are Never Getting Back Together, Taylor's version, and it's like, are you happy? Like, what's <laughs> what's? It just is. I I don't want well, the word limp to cross. My I mean, mind. listen to the untrained ear. It sounds exactly the same as the original. <laughs> but like, but like, 
I don't know, people who consume a lot of music, especially right. Taylor music and everything, you're like, no, this doesn't have the same exact energy. And, and we're looking for the same exact energy. And I don't feel that way about the Nathan Chapman produced stuff, like the Speak mm, Now stuff, yeah. and even like the title track of Red, like anything that's non-Max Martin, I have no issue with her re-records. But Max Martin's a specific type of genius, and your collaborative efforts made these songs so perfect. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Taylor fan, but not a big enough one that's not going to listen to the "Quote unquote stolen versions." If the new versions are bad, yeah, like I'm just not. Yeah, so, but I'm excited. I'm I excited. Have high hopes and everything. Yes. I mean, when it comes to the the cover, I I think the cover's nice. Yeah, I I feel neither bad nor amazing <laughs> about it. Right. Um, I was surprised though. I was like, oh, seagulls. It's like I personally never saw 1989 as a beachy album. Right. <laughs> and uh. And when I said that, everyone was just like, what are you talking about? It's a totally beachy album. And I'm like, no, when I think of 1989, I think of like elect, like 80s like pop. Yeah. That's what I think of, especially because the cover of the original album, it's a Polaroid right. and everything. And so I'm like, I think of the 80s and not so much beach. Yeah. And then I think Austin in the Discord was like, well, no, like there's seagulls on her shirt on the album cover oh. of the original 1989. And in my head, I was just like, I've literally never took notice of that shirt Me neither. ever. So I think it's just a Amazing and a testament to like Taylor as an artist that, and I say have said this before like each fan of Taylor Swift really like like is able to find such specific things right. about her like in all of her songs and I I, don't, I think it's kind of amazing that you know even like songs like we were talking on our Discord we were trying to figure out like you know all of us. Um, is there a song that we can all agree of hers that is not good? Mm. And we couldn't do it because everyone has a personal connection to something so specific about right. her. Um, and so I, I think that it's it's just interesting. It is I interesting. Know. And I, again, you know, if, if the cover is not my favorite, I still think of her TV color covers. The red one is my favorite. But mm -hmm. I'm not going to get to... I've, listen to many great albums with bad covers or covers that weren't my favorite before and it does not affect my enjoyment of the album. So just make the production right. Even if it's not Max, I, it needs to be right here. Like over any of her al other albums, this makes the biggest difference to me. So I'm going to put good vibes into the universe. And hope that the good vibes return on October 27th. Baby, I hope you get what you want. I hope so, You've too. You've earned that. Speaking of, did you see that she might go number one next week with Cruel Summer? She better. Everyone better stream that I, sound Because somehow Let's the go. Hot 100 has transformed into the racist 100. But I do think that Jason Aldean fell from number one to like 27. So like good fucking riddance. But Taylor beating Morgan Wallen and uh, Luke Combs would be so lovely. And also, just I love... The fact that All Too Well went to number one for Taylor, because even though it was not like a newly written song, it's one of her best. So seeing it in her list of number ones makes me happy. And mm -hmm. I feel like Cruel Summer getting that same treatment would make me thrilled. I, Of course, in a perfect world, we would be watching a very well-produced music video for this song. But if I can't have that, I want the number one. Well, in a perfect world, COVID never would have happened. And the, <laughs> the lover era would have continued on and Cruel Summer would have become a single eventually. Did you see that the numbers are going up again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's... They're, they're always going to fluctuate. I know, so. but I'm nervous. Don't, You're not nervous? You, you will be fine. I'm I'm wearing. I'm going to wear a mask a lot. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Do what I'm you got to do. Do what do. you feel comfortable with. I'm nervous. Um, But yes, no. Ideally, there would be no COVID. Yeah. And the Cruel Summer would have had its moment. But this is a lovely thing that happens uh, as a result of TikTok. So I don't say it a lot. But thank you, TikTok, for giving us the Cruel Summer resurgence. Uh, in other great news, Tory Lanez, the man who shot Megan Thee Stallion in the foot, uh, and refused to take a plea deal for some reason and has since been essentially mocking her, saying she's lying in all of the time since this incident has happened, has been sentenced to 10 years in prison. And to that I say, goodbye, sir. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't have taken the plea and why even now you're refusing to apologize, saying you're not going to apologize for something you didn't do. I believe he's selling free Tory merch already. It's like, this man is like the Jin Shah of you know, hip hop stars and except 
Well, no, Jen Shaw did something awful too. Yeah, so they both are horrible <laughs> people who deserve to be behind bars, and I can't believe have the audacity to try and monetize this horrible event. Yeah. That is your fault. I mean, the thing is, if you are trying to make people believe that you did not do this thing, then you don't also mock the situation exactly. by selling merch. Like right. that it's it's like, what do you want us to believe? Right. You know, because we're not gonna be on your side for this because even Lord Lord knows, even if you didn't do it, like someone still got shot. Exactly. Like this is <laughs> Like, funny. This isn't funny or amusing. And so it's just making us not believe you even more. It was so strange also reading so many of the comments online that were like, oh, really? He's getting 10 years for like a grazed toe? It's like, he sh shot someone. <laughs> Thank you. Like, he shot this woman. Like, why we think we can treat black women this way and that there should be no recourse is beyond me. It was, I think, you know, lock them up. And if it needs to be longer, do that. Apparently California has something about like an 85%, um, you know, they must serve that for mm -hmm. crimes like this. So it's at least going to be eight and a half years. I don't know if like the time he's already spent in jail is going towards that. And of course, ideally high level, we all want to, abol or I would like to abolish the police system, the jails, things like that. But in this especially, instance in a world in which prisons exist that's where you should be okay <laughs> oh yeah all right i just tory lanes is a no here and that's the all yes <laughs> this time last week we were chatting about your favorite show mm -hmm. big brother mm -hmm. and we were i think the quote was well at least nothing racist has happened yet <laughs> And here we sit. <laughs> we were still in week one, motherfuckers. It's we couldn't even get into week two. I cannot believe how often this happens in the Big Brother house, but a Big Brother 25 contestant, Luke Valentine, has been kicked off the show for using the N-word on the live feeds. Yeah. What's, what's happening in Big Brother in which these racist events just seem to occur? Um, I have a theory, but I want to hear your theory first. Well, I mean, people are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then they cast people and cameras are on them 24-7. Yes. When you cast stupid people, you're going to watch them do stupid shit. Right. And so, yeah, what it happened at like one in the morning or like two in the morning and I was just about to go to bed. Yes. And I see on the feeds, well, Luke dropped the N-word. On the live feeds. And what they were doing is they were, it was him, it was uh, Jared Fields, who was Suri Fields' son, mm. uh, and this guy, Corey, and this guy, um, Hysom. And they were all in the room. And uh, Luke said, you know, was telling a story about like, he was. I think he was talking to someone and he was explaining mm. where they were. And I'm going to use the word man as a replacement. And he said something like just very casual, like, oh, we were in the cheese room, man. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, dude. And Jared Fields, who was in the room, who is black, was just like, dude, <laughs> dude. Oh. And, uh, and you would think that Luke would say like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Right. I'm so sorry. You would think you would think an I'm so sorry would come out of the mouth. Did no, instead, he says, huh, a little slip of the tongue. <laughs> it's just like, oh, my it's just like God. That's the oh, thing. I've my God. only watched the short clip and mm -hmm. just the like easiness that it yeah. came out of his mouth is like oh this is who you use this in your regular life it's it comes so easily to you yeah that was like, what was very apparent. it just was like shocking to me like what is going on in people's minds like yes you are being filmed 24 7 and it just to me it feels like yes they cast stupid people but like i bet there are stupid people on every one of these reality shows but they're not being live streamed 24 7 oh and yeah. it's like if all of you fucking housewives fucking vanderpump rules kids were being filmed all the time oh and my god being live streamed none of you would ever have jobs not none but i'd say a good 25 percent. <laughs> but it's like why, why is this still an issue? Like, I feel like as a society, we've all agreed what is and is not acceptable. And they're not hard rules to follow. Oh, yeah. As white people, no? I mean, you can tell me if it's hard, but it seems like <laughs> you've never had an issue. I've been doing fine. I think that's great. Um, and, and, I mean... Uh, it's 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 just it's not even like a because like there are a lot of seasons of Big Brother where it's like things happen and like optically they're weird yeah. and you know they're like learning lessons to be learned and blah 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 and it's you know that's why reality shows exist to show like people from different backgrounds like sort of learning about each other mm. um, but this is just like flat out like blatant like racism 101 it's the thing <laughs> like if you're gonna say what's a racist yeah. thing that can happen you'd yes, say this you would say that and so <sighs> uh, feeds went down early the next morning and we were just 
like, okay, something is happening. And then it was announced in the news that Luke was um, expelled from the house because mm. ever since 2020, uh, I believe, uh, uh, there was a, a guy in the house named Memphis and on the feeds, he was like saying something. I forget what he was saying, but like mid word, the feeds changed to a different mm. room. And like the word, it sounded like he was starting to say the N word. Mm. And so everyone was like, what is this? And so CBS put out a statement that was just like, we uh, just like checked the footage again and saw what he was saying. And it, it, it's confirmed that he did not use any um, hate speech or anything. Okay. Um, and then in the statement, it said, any house guest that is caught, you know, using hate speech of any kind will immediately be expelled. And so immediately everyone was like, okay, you made this statement, right, CBS. So therefore he has to be, it doesn't matter what his intentions were. He has to be expelled from the house. And right. he was promptly. And it was dealt with on the Thursday night show, which was, I mean, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> like, see, I can't imagine watching Big Brother mm. and only watching the edited show right. and being entertained. Right. Like, because if you, because I, you know, follow the feeds and I'm thrilled. And especially like this year, the cast is really entertaining. Like, they're all, like, there is a character, there's a, a house guest named Izzy, yeah. and she is a little Tasmanian devil running through that house, just like so enthusiastic, so pumped for game talk and everything. Right. And so entertaining to watch. And CBS is just, taking everything that's entertaining on the live feeds and not showing it. And it seems like they want to, um, I, it seems like CBS is so worried about like making all the house guests likable mm. and palatable um, because of their like demographic that they just water these people down and make them not interesting on the edit, even though they're very interesting in person. And so, you know, this incident happened and so CBS had to address it on the show, but the right. way it was addressed was very, it was very quick and everything. And it, they didn't really dive too deep into it, which like mm. a little bit I get because it was very rushed. Right. Um, but still like just, I, I can't imagine watching only the edited show and being entertained. That's by the it. thing is like, I feel like there were all these rumors that maybe there's talk of getting rid of the live feeds. Like, then there would be no show left if these are the edited episodes you're mm -hmm. getting that are such fucking messes. Well, I wonder, it's like, because Big Brother Canada has gotten rid of the live feeds mm. and it, no one in the US wants that because that's the show. Yeah. That's what makes everything exciting right. and why people get so invested in the show. Because mm. Lord knows we would not be invested if we were just <laughs> watching the edited shows that they put out. Of course. Because the edited shows they just put out, are, it's just like 20 minutes of them being like, oh, this competition was so fun. We're all in diapers. Beep, 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 with like weird sound effects. Um, and so I I don't foresee US getting rid of the live feeds, but like can't they like be delayed maybe 30 minutes mm. and therefore when like stuff like this happens and you want to not show that to viewers because it's, you know, it's not a pleasant thing to see. Right. Um why not delay them like 30 minutes or something but that way? I worry that would also mean they have time things. to cover up yeah. that this happened. Yeah, um, which is what the show would do before social media right. like horrible racist things would happen in the big brother house right. all the time before social media but right. they, it, the news wouldn't get out right I, um, I will say as much as you guys are having fun in the competitive reality TV channel and Discord and Janie's watching the season, people mm -hmm. are talking to me about it, I really was half considering watching the show and then this racist event happened. He's like, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm all set. Even though he's out of the house, it's like this is a good reminder that like I don't need this in my life. I've just been given a real housewives of Salt Lake City trailer in which Heather uh, Gay asks Mary, who was a housewife, was not on last season and is now back. Uh, uh, but and also was caught on mic saying that she looked inbred the season prior. Heather Gay goes, so do you think I look inbred? And Mary goes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and they cut back to Heather blinking and like in. And I'm like, that's the kind of TV I need to see. That's television. That's how. Like, see, like hilarious, stupid shit like that happens on the live feeds in the Big Brother house. But CBS would never show something like that. Yes. Yeah. It's just. I, I urge us, Salt Lake City was not good last season. Watch the trailer. It is a lot of fun. I think you might enjoy it. Uh, and other news that's more positive than like a racist, well, I guess the, him being kicked out is positive. Wayne Brady came out as pansexual. Hot. That's very exciting. Apparently, this is happening on a reality show that he is currently filming about blended families. Oh, I didn't know that. With his ex-wife and the conversation about his pansexuality comes up and he comes out to her and I guess the rest of the blended family. Brady puts it another way. Bisexual with an open mind, he says with a chuckle. 
good for you. Welcome to the club. We love everybody under the umbrella and think everybody deserves rights. Pansexuals, gays, lesbians, bisexuals, yeah. everybody. Trans and, people. Yeah. Especially fucking trans people. And I love Wayne Brady. He's like in, incredibly talented. I've always enjoyed Wayne Brady a lot. So right. like happy he's part of the club. I know. It's very exciting. Um, so Billy Porter came out and mm-hmm. he had an interview that there are two headlines popping out of. Uh, was this an interview with Variety? I don't even know who this interview uh, was with, but he says, quote unquote, I have to sell my house due to the strike, slams Bob Iger for saying our demands are for a living wage are unrealistic and just so gives him a simple fuck you. <laughs> he was set to write and star in a movie that uh, and sign on to a new series, but of course neither are happening, are happening at this point. Um, he calls out the anonymous Hollywood executive, saying the studios would hold out on meeting with the WGA again until its members went broke. And he also calls out Bob Iger. To hear Bob Iger say that our demands for a living wage are unrealistic when he makes $78,000 a day, I don't have any words for it, but fuck you. I mean... Which, yes. absolutely. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. If the story ended with that, I I'd be thrilled. That's the thing. And it did for a couple of days. For a couple of days. For a couple of days, I was like, yes, Billy Porter gets it. I am so excited. What a great thing to say. Oh, it's like when the Big Brother house starts, you're just like, it's been great for a couple of days. I know. And, and if then... only it stopped there. Billy Porter then calls out Anna Wintour for making Harry Styles the first solo man to cover Vogue after he had done a Q&A with her. Um, which, okay. That on itself is like, okay, I see the call out. I understand if you're going to say we support gender nonconforming people, having a straight white man represent that is a little odd. And for him to be the first man on the cover of the magazine, sure. If there was no quote, I'd be like, I see his point of view. Sure. The quote. The quote. (laughs) That bitch said to me. Okay, and let me stop. (laughs) I, I know it's just a part of the sentence. We have notes right away. We have notes right away. We as queer people, as men of any stripe, Calling women bitches in that sort of way is not something we need to be doing anymore. I think it needs to be thrown in the bin along with like, ew, vaginas. You know, like, I feel like there was a type of gay man that would be misogynistic in their own way that they thought was playful and okay. And that's not to say that, you know, every straight woman has always done right by the gays and queer people in their lives. But let's, I mean... I, a yes yeah. bitch, sure, yeah. but a that bitch, yes. no. There is a very big difference between a yes bitch and a that bitch. That bitch is like, no. It's yeah. like we need to be respectful of people because it's like the whole point of being like anti-misogyny and anti, you know, it's like you can't tear each other down. Mm. We are both people and communities that are being held down by misogyny in our own ways. So using words like bitch or the C word to describe people in a negative light, women in a negative light is not okay. It's like not something we need to be doing now. And like, oh, like, oh, hey, hey, vaginas, whatever. Especially to the press. Especially to the press. (laughs) Like, like, which girl, girl, like vent to your fucking friends. That's the thing. It's like you have text messages, you have iMessages, you have group chats. Maybe you have a Discord. Don't do it in your Discord. (laughs) But if you have a group chat, that's a great time for it. That bitch said to me at the end, how can we do better? And I was so taken off guard. Uh, I should have said, use your power as... um, Oh, use your power as Vogue to uplift the voices of the leaders of this degendering of uh, fashion movement. And then six months later, Harry Styles is the first man on the cover. It's not Harry Styles' fault. He goes on and goes on. I just, yes, I feel like a that bitch. And I mean, I'm someone, bitch comes easily to me. I would, if any woman has ever been offended by my use of the word, please note that I want to mean it positively. I won't be calling anyone that bitch in any company. And I think it's something that like, sure, if you're a gay of a certain age, it'll be hard to work through. But this is just such a bad look that it needs to be a wake up call to us all to watch those B words to quote Nene Leakes. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like it, what I'm reading into this, I could be completely wrong. Okay. Is that maybe Billy Porter was in the running Mm. or like maybe that's something that, you know, he wanted and everything. And it's kind of like, well, maybe the reason why you didn't get it is because maybe in the industry that we don't know about, you have a reputation of doing things like calling professional women that bitch. <laughs> like, and someone in the comment has said, Beyonce is that bitch. And it's like, it, I get that it's hard, but we all can use our context clues. Yes. He wasn't saying Anna Wintour is that bitch. He said that bitch. Like, there, it's the feeling behind the bitch that makes a difference. <laughs> and that feeling was so negative and dark-sided. Yeah. And, so, and I don't know. He was acting like it was crazy that Harry Styles was the cover of Vogue over right. someone. And it's like, Harry Styles is 
incredibly famous. Like, it, it isn't it isn't crazy that Harry Styles is the first solo man to cover right. the uh, to grace the cover of Vogue. Right. It's, it's not like crazy, right? But and it's like I get the annoyance around sure, of him course. dressing, uh, you know, in a gender non-conforming way and still living his life as a cis, cis straight man, kind of being the you know poster boy for that. I understand that there's annoyance there. But we just gotta watch the phrasing. Yeah. I'm I'm not one to say you have to say certain things a certain way. But if it's something that's going to be like tearing down a community of people, then yes, I am. And if you're going to talk like that, like in a professional setting, expect people to not want to work with you. Mm, like wow. point blank, period. Like people are. This gives me the impression like Billy Porter had acts some sort of way in a right. professional setting, and people are kind of over it and don't want to deal with it, and that's why you're not on the cover of Vogue. Well, I hope that's not the case. I hope this was a one-off event because Billy Porter is amazing and posed, very talented and groundbreaking person. I want to believe good things, but this just was not a good quote. And it's also not even like Harry Styles is on the cover of Vogue being like, look at me, queer representation. R- sure. Like, he's just on the cover of Vogue because he's famous. Right. And but it's like male they, could, they could have model. thrown him in a tux. I mean, <laughs> you know? Sure, like, of course. Have, I, and I don't think it's his fault specifically, mm-hmm. but there is him being the poster child for, you know, gender nonconforming dress. I can understand being annoying. I truly can. Sure. Right? But then also, are we also annoyed for like at like Prince for doing the same sort of thing when, well, he, was in, when end, he was in his heyday? Prince at the end was going into homophobia with his Jones Witness <laughs> well, stuff. So I mean, yes, that's a whole different topic. It's a whole different topic. <laughs> but yes, Prince has his own problematic points. Uh, the Emmys have been pushed back officially till January 15th is the new date. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. It's Martin Luther King Day. Um We'll see if it sticks. Hopefully, everything's wrapped up by then with I the WGA so. SAG and all of that. Fingers crossed. But everyone, mark your calendars. Uh, supposedly, this is just a rumor, but it's one I hope is true. So that's why we're talking about it. Britney Spears is reportedly ready for a tell-all interview with Oprah Winfrey. She's considering an interview offer from Oprah and sitting down with her to talk about the truth about what happened to her during her conservatorship years. This is according to The Sun. So again, it's not a great source, but I want it to be true. So I'm mostly reading this to manifest it. I would love to hear from Britney directly. We heard she's not doing her audiobook, so she won't be like in our ears telling us her story. I just want to hear the story from her in some way, shape, or form, Mm -hmm. and this could be that. Okay. All right. Oh, do you think it's going to (laughs) happen? Yeah, I I don't see it being out of the realm of possibilities. Okay. Like, I'm not like, oh, what a crazy thing. Like, right. It's like, oh, I kind of anticipated something like this. I, would, I hope so. I just yeah. am hopeful. Uh, supposedly, Lizzo is facing sexual harassment allegations from six more people. Some of the claims we are reviewing may be actionable, but it's too soon to say that is come, coming from uh, the representative for the uh, two dancers that are already suing her. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, apparently, SAG AFTRA is supportive of Bethany Frankel's efforts to uh, unionize reality TV. This was in the Hollywood Reporter. Uh, they've contacted Bethany's legal team and let it be known that depending on production and talent, they may be able to cover them under their network code agreement. Oh. I, okay, and I say this, I feel like every time we talk about Bethany, I have to say, do I think she's doing this a bit for attention yeah do i think she's doing this because she wants to get booked and have something to talk about and for people to pay attention to her absolutely but at the end of the day i think she's doing a good thing sure so i hope that something happens i hope that they reality talent gets covered reality crews get covered the editors everybody does because they work so tirelessly and for so many hours straight that you read about and i feel like there was a guy off of love is blind who has a similar uh point of view and i don't know if he's taken legal action as well but like would describe his experiences on that set so this isn't a nbc universal bravo specific thing it's just about the genre of reality and those people should be uh covered and protected as much as anybody else yes well as someone who is about to run for president Um, I I, didn't know. I can say yes. that you know obviously when you're running for something like president or like as the spokesperson of something like yes. you you at least I most people I think do go in with good intentions being yes. like I want to help people and everything but like you know I also I also like being the spokesperson <laughs> I do like the spotlight a little bit on me and everything yeah. mm-hmm. so and there and Bethany obviously likes that she does. Bethany you know even though sometimes she's a little bit of a monster. I, I'm sure there are many 
causes that she supports that are very good. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? She's always the first when there's like a big natural disaster. She has a whole, yeah. you know, a lot of way of raising money and getting them to the people that need it. So absolutely. She's, she's a person with multiple layers. Many of those layers are monster and many of those layers are helpful. And you know what you do when you have layers, you go into the big brother house so everyone can see your layers 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. That's the idea. I would dissect to, them. Ooh, imagine Bethany in the big brother house. She'd get expelled immediately. I'd love it. Who I'd, knows I'd, what she would say. I'd be like, this is great. But it would I be would awful. be on those feeds. It would be. My eyes would be wide open. <laughs> While I was sleeping, I'd be watching them. Um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but some sad stuff has happened this week that I feel like we should discuss. Did you see that Sandra Bullock's partner, Brian Randall, has passed away at 57 after a private three year battle with ALS? Um, this happened. Um, was it on August 5th that Brian Randall passed away peacefully after a three-year battle? Brian chose early to keep his journey with ALS private, and those of us who cared for him did our best to honor his request. Just very sad. Yeah. Such a young age to lose someone. And, and um, ALS is horrible. Awful. Horrible. Awful. Absolutely. Uh, you saw the wildfires in Maui. Awful. We all need to do what we can to look up where we can uh, donate because the 80 people, I believe, have died. This is the deadliest natural disaster in state history. Those wildfires started on August 8th and swept across Hawaii, mainly on the island of Maui, causing widespread destruction. Uh, an entire town of Lahaina, and excuse me if I'm pronouncing that right, was destroyed. Um, the death toll is expected to rise. Just look up wherever you can to yeah. donate because this is just such a devastating event. And lastly, I this did not happen this past week. It happened, I believe, the week prior, but it's kind of just been bouncing around in my head. Did you hear about the O'Shea Sibley story? Yeah. This was um, the dancer who uh, passed away because he was uh, allegedly fatally stabbed by a teen on July 29th while voguing at a Brooklyn gas station. He was truly just voguing and listening to Renaissance. And some teen came up and said, that they, you know, didn't like that. You stop doing that. Stop your dancing. Stop your movement. Stop your fucking joy. Mm -hmm. And decided to stab him. It well, I know like a fight ensued like yes. afterwards. Yes. And so I, I don't think like cameras were on exactly like where it happens, like where the actual stabbing happened. Right. But, like awful. Terrible. Just completely. The fact that like queer joy and especially black queer joy gets met with this kind of resistance that's not just resistance it's deadly like people would rather you be dead than have joy and express it is so disheartening and it's I think that's one of the many reasons it's reverberating in my head uh, this person is a teen and will be tried as an adult because uh, the charges are a uh, hate crime and the fatal um, and also I believe the, uh, the killer or alleged killers uh, lawyer has said that he is a good Christian boy, and it's like you're referring to this man who allegedly murdered someone as a good Christian boy. Mm. Are you fucking kidding me with this? And it's just like if you are, if you see something that you don't like, but it is not hurting anyone, leave the motherfucker leave alone. Leave them alone. What I just like this world, you know, I try not to be negative, but sometimes shit like this happens, and it's hard not to think that like we are sick, yeah, and like I don't want it to feel like it's beyond repair. But stories like this just are very disheartening and disgusting, and I pray for all the people that loved O'Shea and yeah. are celebrating him, and it's just it's just devastating. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anything else you want to tell the people? Uh, that we'll be back. We are going to be back. We're going to be back soon with more Two Game Mats, the podcast. I, I can see it better. I can stop it if you want me to. I got it. Okay. okay. I got this. I'm oh, your future president. I love I've it. Got Our this. new president, Steele. How are we doing? Um, <laughs> Grace asked, who's this Britney person? She's the queen, Grace. <laughs> Listen up, Grace. Um, don't let them take away that joy. It's true. Honestly, after that lawyer agreed. Um, almost 100. Yeah, we have people here. I'm, I, if you're here to talk about Taylor, we already talked about her, but we're yeah. excited you for... You can go back. Yes, you can <laughs> rewind. We're excited for 1989 TV. Um, oh, about Tory Lanez. He attempted to kill her. That's the thing. In 10 years. Um, Tyler says, I generally think that there's no use for prisons anymore, but I make exceptions for people like him. He's garbage. The people, I just think it's so strange the people that are like going out of their way to defend this man. Like It makes no sense. Like, not, he literally shot someone. Just, like say, just say you hate women and go. Like truly, I don't get it. Um, I'm just trolling this Jimmy person we just <laughs> met. Oh no. 
Oh, Kweku is here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Kweku, how hope, are you? Yes, we hope you are well. It's been so long. Rich needs a Beyonce Oprah interview. I want to know what happened to that foot. I love, like, that's not something we really need to get to the bottom of, right? I mean, like, she probably just injured her foot in the same way like we all injure ourselves right. going she, through life. She hurt herself. She's doing better. I see her dancing up a storm these days, which makes me think, come September 1st. She's going to be ready. She's, she's going to be, be warmed up and ready. It will be her birthday. Oh, it'll be just before. I just am, I like can't wrap my head around it. I watched the videos of people going and talking about how much they loved it. I listened to fucking Oprah being like, this was the, the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I was like, <laughs> yes, Oprah. I can't believe it. This is the, and Oprah has seen some she's shit. She's seen some things. So. And this is, you know, she's a Tina Turner stand, so she knows a great performer when yeah. she sees one. So. Woo. Can't wait. Someone, I'm worried, someone just emailed my heart at us. And oh, it really? it seemed like something negative about Beyonce. The, our, and our first email, my heart's a fucking mess. <laughs> like, no, no shade to sent it. It's not really your fault, but like, y'all no, are we have another. Hear... We have another uh, one that was a YouTube comment as well. Oh, and a YouTube comment. Yeah. Um, I'll re- um, so, sorry, we're both reading this to see if it's worthy. Of, <laughs> if it's oh. all too mean. Oh, no, actually, this is not anti-Beyonce. And it's short. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, cool. it's not anti Beyonce. Phew! Phew, guys. Uh, and we good. almost it's had a moment on here. So glad I caught this live. We're so glad you caught it too. Beyonce and Oprah interview the journey to find visuals for Renaissance. That's the thing. If she wants to explain to Oprah why this has taken so long, I'll accept that. But I feel like Beyonce's made it pretty clear that she just wants to interact with us through her art. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't anticipate many more interviews. Uh, from oh, her? she doesn't want to engage with none of it. No, She's not no. doing that. Going on Tyra Banks. No, the, and, <sighs> those clips. I mean, listen, guys, Tyra's great. Ski, <laughs> Yance. Where's your favorite place to ski? I don't know if that was one, but that was like her whole interview. If I were a Tolstoy, can you do a Russian accent? I can't. The best. Like no one is giving Tyra Banks level television these but days. No one should, <laughs> and, and no one should. That was of its time. It was of the aughts. And they need to be like. But what a, what a memory! It was. A memory. I loved it. I thought the Tyra Banks show was a, a blast. Uh, it, is it just anti not releasing the visuals? They are leaking though. They must be coming. Even Grace is believing that the Beyonce visuals are coming. That means they're really coming, guys. Because Grace was the biggest like they're not going to happen. Grace is not a believer. She was very much like give it up, delicious. And I am so glad that she's on board. I heard Brittany is going to do an open interview to promote her new book. We yeah, we just talked about chatted that. about that, and we're hopeful. I hope yeah. that does happen. Yeah, because like who else at this point would Oprah interview? No, like, who, like who, no one else is at like for the depth of what they need to be. Yeah, discussing, that, that's something that people everyone will tune in it to ha- watch. It has to be. Oprah. It has to be. Like I can't think of another possible interviewer. No, e, in and a from that Oprah. Mariah interview uh, before Mariah's. Uh, biography came out autobiography came out is so fucking good it's mm-hmm. excellent she's like gets challenged by oprah in ways but like mariah clearly respects her so she's not like giving her something to, she doesn't give her a too rude of a response mm-hmm. <laughs> to the pressure um, give steel a tire ask talk show <laughs> i can do it like, something fun that me and travis have started doing um you know how like when the tv is on and then it goes to like a screensaver of like pretty pictures yeah. of stuff like hummingbirds or whatever. We've started um, talking to each picture that pops up as if it was like one of the pictures in Tyra's hands at like the top model judging. Mm. And and like we'd be like, hummingbird, y- your, the angle of your wing is incredible in this picture, but is flying all you can really do? <laughs> Some of us are worried. And like, it's we're just like, rocks. <laughs> This is what I'm like, saying. For your next fucking Chatty Cathy's with Travis, you've got to do some of the bits. The girls need to see the bits. Okay? The girls need to see the bits. But the bits have to just come naturally. We can't just like sit there and be like, these are the bits we do and well, do it. Well, keep the camera on until you forth. do it. Just walk around your apartment, camera on. Girl, you know on. that camera eats that battery. That's true. You're right. You know the battery you dies after 10 I seconds. You, I can give you a battery thing that you can plug in. I won't give it to you. I'll send you a link. Thank you. But you see, that one's plugged in forever. This yeah. one never falls out. It will out. never die. It will never die. Uh, I just stepped in. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Uh, they were doing a lot of extra filming at the Renaissance show I was at in Chicago. I'm thinking the visuals are going to be a movie slash tour video combo. They need to be separate. I mean, I we love a tour video, but I need the vi- I need Renaissance to be a film. We we, we support cinema here we at Two Game and We all know that I'm the cinephile of the group. Yeah, if so it's a tour, just... if it's a tour video, no offense, but like. I'm not watching. <laughs> I've, I've got I've got bigger fish to fry. You, you should watch the tour video if it's released. But I, I would watch it like if you watch it and you're like, oh, do you want to watch this together? Sure. But like, I'm not going to go out of my way to watch something like that. Did you watch Homecoming? Of course I did. Okay, well, that's the same. <laughs> <laughs> Look, listen to you. That's literally a tour movie. I guess, but like, 
Uh, but homecoming was such a moment. I'm, this is going to be a moment. I promise you. Okay. Whatever it's going to be. But yeah. But I've already seen done. so much t- like tour footage. It's like, oh, well, I've already seen this. I mean, you're you're wrong. <laughs> tour yeah. tour videos don't excite me that much. I understand that. Yeah. But just remember homecoming. Yeah, homecoming like, excited you. Homecoming, well, because homecoming is objectively exciting. I because mean, yes. that was a fucking show. You don't think Renaissance is of going to be it's a fucking be a show, show? But like, I've I've already seen the show. No, you haven't. Oh. You've seen clips on TikTok. You've not seen the not show. Not on TikTok. Oh, I, I, I don't watch that. YouTube, whatever, wherever you're watching, the visuals are coming. <laughs> I know, Austin, yell at him. <laughs> We do love. I mean, I also like. I don't. I like. I. I don't get excited for concerts like in general, except unless they're a Spice Girls reunion. So or like Carol Channing with a piano. Um, piano. Like a pianist. Like that. I know. I know. But it. like piano. That's like your. It sounds like you're saying piano weird. Carol Channing with a piano. Piano. You're saying piano. It's like it's like piano. Piano. Yeah, that's same Pian- piano. I'm just saying it quickly. Oh. Like oh, oh I'm playing the piano. I know. I'm hearing an A. Well, I mean, clean your ears out. My ears are great. Thank I don't know. You. They're getting My a little ears old. Are great. No, they're doing lovely. They're getting, and you're the one who doesn't Q-tip. You actually shouldn't Q-tip. <laughs> that doctor that Grace sent us said not to Q-tip, which I love. Wait, before you scoop, do, <laughs> scoop, don't give up that. My. <laughs> My favorite thing about Matt Steele is like he can be given like, oh, this is a video of a doctor telling you not to do this thing. And he's like, yeah, that's one argument I've heard before. And it's like, no, he's a doctor. <laughs> like this is a person who has studied this telling you something. It's like, yeah, no, I hear but, what okay, he's saying. Here's the thing with like those videos when people are like, oh, you shouldn't stick Q-tips in your ear because it actually does this. And I'm like, yeah, if you stick it in like a fucking idiot, <laughs> oh like there's a way to do it where you're not like <laughs> – like stabbing yourself in the eardrum. I, but like, wouldn't you trust someone who went to school f- about the body to be like, hey, Q-tips aren't be- aren't good for you? That's not enough for you to be like, okay, I hear you. And like, I I trust them because, but also doctors are used to dealing with fucking idiots <laughs> who will probably just stick the Q-tip in, just like. I, uh, whereas I am like, no, I have a sophisticated, girl, nuanced way of doing it. I I think you could just say, I I know it's not good for me, but I like doing it. And that, that too. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Not like the doctor's wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying the doctor's wrong. Yes. I'm just saying some doctors are quacks. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky says the mats are fighting. Sometimes the mats fight. Whatever. I mean, like, seriously, like, there is a girl who I will not say her name. Who? But I've only met her a handful of times. But I saw online that she uh, got her license to become a therapist. And I was like, ooh. Oh, someone you know? Someone I someone I relatively know. And I'm just like, oh, there is someone who literally I've met her twice and she should not be a therapist. Well, I've I've <laughs> heard from um people mm-hmm. that sometimes those who are therapists are those who need it the most. I uh, I know maybe one therapist yeah. where I'm like, I would trust you. <laughs> <laughs> there are some other therapists right. I know where I'm just like, never in a million years. <laughs> but I also I mean, I feel like they're different. Let's see, Types of medicine, right? Like, I would trust sure. someone who's been like, "This is how the body works. This is what you should shouldn't do." This yeah. is what happened. Ones that are exact sciences oh, are Christ. are good. Not Ther- anti-therapy I'm over not here. Anti-therapy, <laughs> but like, therapy is not an exact science. We, so, so it's easier for the the crazy people to slip in. We are never gonna get a better help fucking ad after this. <laughs> no sponsorship. Uh, uh, well, that's better help will help you find the right therapist. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, so let's get to recording part two. Oh, my job. Yeah, don't forget. Don't you forget. All right, we did it. Hello. We're back. We're back. Matt Palmer, you want to give the commercial? I do want to give the commercial, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. If you enjoy it, please go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Give us a five-star review. It would really mean so much to us. It helps us in the algorithm. We only accept five-star reviews. As you know, anything lower, keep to yourself. Write yourself an email. We also would love to hang out with you on the Patreon. If you go to patreon.com slash 2 mats, you can join the Discord where we chit-chat with the coolest people you've never met uh, all the time. It's really fun. And we also are putting a lot of exclusive Patreon content up. We just put up a uh, reaction to Tori Kelly's cut, that Chatty Cathy's episode that uh, Matt Steele recorded with Travis, and we're doing our Beyonce uh, album reviews. B-Day is coming up by the time this podcast is released. It's just a lot of fun, and we hope to see you there. Yeah. 
And so now we are on to email my heart, which is the section of the podcast where we answer any questions that you guys might have. You can be a part of email my heart if you email us at 2 gaymats at gmail.com. Two is spelled T-W-O. Or sometimes you can leave a comment if you are watching this on YouTube. Yes. You can leave a comment and be like, hey, this is for email my heart, which is what our good friend No Angel did. Yes, No Angel, hi. Hello, No Angel commented on one of our videos. Although I haven't been making the lives, I religiously keep up with the videos. So much has happened already since this past Sunday. Quick email my heart questions from YouTube. Given how Renaissance is still impactful in the zeitgeist and mm. still very now, as we know time moves so quickly and fast in the digital age we're in, what do you think of the marketing and promotion aspects that Beyonce is doing for this era that that has captured pop culture with a mighty grip. Do you think artists moving forward will completely change their promo strategies? And which artists do you think could almost replicate the longevity and relevance that Beyonce's renaissance has achieved? Thank you for answering or considering No Angel. No Angel. And also No Angel wants to remind us that a new Tanache album is coming. That's great. Good no no Angel is our, our resident Tanache stand. Yes. Uh, to that I say, and this is in no way meant as shade, what promotion did she do? Like she, I feel like the promotion of this album has been uh, break my soul, put out the single, have it be excellent. She put out a remix or two. She put out the, the thing is the promotion was the album itself is so good. And so talked about, like she didn't have the visual element. She has not been putting out music videos for the singles. The singles are just kind of happening on their own. And then she's like giving radio dates to them. And then she launched this tour that is excellent. But the promotion this time around feels like it's just the art itself. Like she has such a grip on pop culture because the art itself is so good and forward thinking and like something we had never heard of before from her. And a surprising, but it wasn't like it was a surprise release. It wasn't like, oh, we're putting out all the music videos right along with it. Like the, I think the story is the fact that the art is the only thing that is selling it. The reason for the longevity is just on the strength of the album itself. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing, but very hard to replicate. Oh yeah. Like who else could do it? Fucking right. nobody. <laughs> <laughs> no, like no, flat out, nobody else right. can do it. Like, I mean, Taylor could do something like it, yes. but she would never. No. <laughs> like, no. Taylor would never do anything like I that. I feel like the marketing for her is half the fun. Oh, you know? she is all about that. She loves yeah. it, and I think Beyonce loved it too. Loves it too, but it, it's so unique that she is such a powerhouse and a creative force that is both so commercially viable and so respected mm -hmm. that like to be able to put an album like out like this and have it still be the top of mind for people you have to be a special type of recording artist and a special type of performer on this massive tour for that even to be a yeah and you have to work your way up to yes. that level like we were just joking during the break with the live chatters about Beyonce on the Tyra Banks show and Tyra oh. Banks being like if I were a Tolstoy can you do a Russian accent <laughs> asking these like ridiculous, ridiculous. You could, like Beyonce had to do that shit yes. to become the Beyonce that she is now. Yes. But yeah, Taylor would never do that. And I think it kind of shows how, like who they each are as an artist. Like Beyonce is like, no one can touch me. I am godlike. I will not do interviews. You will never know anything that I am doing. Everything right. is going to be a mystery. Whereas Taylor is all about queen of relatability. Yeah. You will know everything about my life because I'm just like you. We're friends. I have feelings. You will know the inner intricacies of everything I'm thinking at every given moment. Right. Like she's so communicative while also being like cryptically mysterious, but like right. in a different way than Beyonce. You totally. know, um, I think it's also ironic that our other two email my hearts this week are one is about Beyonce and another one is about Taylor. <laughs> Well, they're the two girls well, that we're discussing today, I the, guess. The people who love two game ads just they they know what the other listeners want to listen to. So yes. I guess I'll ask the Beyonce question first. Yes. Which we just got literally a couple minutes ago. Um and it says over Beyonce. It says, hey, guys, I have heard Beyonce was amazing in Atlanta. Initially, when tickets dropped, I bought three tickets in the Club Renaissance section, wow. and two friends paid me for their tickets. All good. Last minute, the day of, I just couldn't make it because I got s stuck out of town for a business trip. Mm. One of my good friends got upset with me because I wouldn't just give him the ticket, and I sold it for half the cost to somebody else since it was the last minute. Mm. Now he isn't taking my calls or messages. Should I just have done him the solid because we've known each other for so long? Should I be the one apologizing? Thanks, guys. Love Chris. You no, should, no, <laughs> no, no. Like those club renaissance tickets, especially I, I know we're not cheap, like hundreds, if not a thousand dollars. Like 
if you can't make this, you've got, I feel like for me, I would be so sad to miss it, but I also don't want to miss that thousand dollars in my fucking bank account. Yeah. Like it only makes sense to sell it. And the thing is you could have reached out to your friend and be like, I can sell it to you for half the price yeah. and then you can bring whoever you want, whatever. And if they had jumped on that, then sure. But the idea of giving away, it's like, why didn't you give me a thousand dollars, Matt Steele? It's like that's not that's like, not what on did the you, table. What did you do to earn a thousand dollars worth not, of product? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I I could see maybe being like okay, telling your friend like I'm gonna try to sell this ticket for a, as much as it was worth. Right. If, if I can't get at least this much, then I'll sell it to you for a little exactly. cheaper than yes. But like no, I'm going to try to sell it. For as much as I can, like right. your your friend is in the wrong here. Absolutely, like point you, blank. Period. You are in the right. Uh, you are in the right, and you are not the person that should be apologizing. In my opinion, you could end this with an agree to disagree if you'd like, and everyone can move on. But certainly, don't apologize for something that you're not sorry for, and you shouldn't be sorry for. It. Frankly. And also, like, if your friend is, like, not taking your calls anymore it's because like, of this. It's like, grow up, like, babe. grow you up. You paid for a ticket and got to see Beyonce. Like, that's what, that was the agreement that you guys made. So, what's the issue? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> uh, wait, what, what do you mean that's the issue? So, no, what's the issue? Oh, no, 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 no. It's the friend who didn't get the ticket. No, that's... I know. I'm saying, so what, I'm asking the friend. What is the issue? Why are you upset with me? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, this question is... Kind of a, a similar idea but about Taylor. <laughs> Even wilder but, somehow. Fr friends fighting over pop stars. This one, I read this and was like, are you, okay, just read it. <laughs> just okay. read it. So this is from Lauren. Lauren says, hi, Matt. I need advice on a fight I got into with my good friend. Let me start by acknowledging a celebrity's sexual orientation. This is a, let me start by acknowledging a celebrity's <laughs> sexual orientation. This a uh, ridiculous thing to have a blow up fight about but the subject comes up every month every few months and we both get so angry about it that we stop talking for a while this is also the only thing in our friendship that we really argue about so it's the topic of taylor swift sexuality my friend strongly believes that taylor is gay slash bi and has come out in her music she is passionate about her belief that taylor also dated diana argon and carly Kloss. i feel it is the simplest word i feel it is the simplest words problematic to assign someone a label that they have not openly labeled themselves. So when Carly went to the Taylor concert this week, my friends started sending me messages about how this big ex this is big ex behavior, and I told her that seems delusional to me. <laughs> Eventually, the conversation devolved to a point that I called her homophobic because in my heart, I truly, I it's true to feel like this is a form of old school 90s homophobia where we just label people gay because they seem gay to us. I probably could have been kinder or used softer words, but honestly, we've had this fight so many times that I felt like I needed to try something different. Her response was how it is actually more hobo homophobic to say that they weren't in a relationship and told me <sighs> to check myself. At this point, I should tell you, both my friend and I are queer, though I don't think my friend has ever acknowledged that about me. I have told her several times that I feel I am somewhere in the LGBTQIA plus rainbow, even though I haven't found a label that felt right to me. I genuinely don't know if she doesn't remember or something else, but she never acknowledges this to me and often tells tells me my perspective isn't valid in fights like this because I am not queer. I don't know what to do or how to approach this anymore. We haven't talked since the fight and I know she's really pissed. Do you have any advice on how to deal with this or similar fights in the future? I don't want to lose her as a friend because again, other than this subject, we almost never fight, but I just don't know how to approach this anymore. Okay. Uh, let's start with the Gaylor part. <laughs> Okay. The whole theory about Taylor Swift being gay apparently is a huge thing. I'm learning more from the Swifties in the Discord about like how problematic and upsetting and like invasive that is. Um, to me, that argument is so wild. And by the way, I am with you. you I, in my opinion, much like our last <laughs> uh, email, my heart. I believe you're in the right. I think this is weird to assign a sexuality to someone that you do not know and who has never come out publicly. But regardless. If this is something that keeps coming up and always ends in a fight, I think you guys need to agree that, like, when you have feelings about this, I'm not the person you should come and talk to about it. Mm -hmm. If you get excited seeing Carly Cross, like, in the same vicinity as Taylor Swift, you must have some other Gaylor friends that you can discuss this with and, like, have a fun time with. Be you have to be like, this conversation is not one for me. I would not like to engage. But, like, oh, wow, uh, look at that surprise song she did. You, you know, I'm so excited she did that. There's so much Taylor Swift shit you can discuss that you have to be like, this part's not for me. 
Hope you find something to talk to you about. Let's discuss something else. It needs to be off the table. It seems like her opinion's not changing. And you're on the right, so you shouldn't change your opinion. So just this needs to no longer be like, oh, you're the first person I'm going to think to talk to when I have a gayler feeling. Yeah, and I just think it's odd that like your friend wants her, wants her, like we joke on the podcast, we're just like, oh, it'd be so cool if she came on as bi. Like, like it'd be amazing. But, and everything, but like if she's not, she's not. Like we're not gonna force that upon her. No. And we're not gonna like say on social media, like she is this when like <sighs> we don't know. Um, so I do think it is a little odd that your friend is so like gets heated that someone would disagree about the fact that she has does not come out yet. I I, I think that's yes. an odd thing to get like heated about right. and everything. I mean, I also just wanted to put it out there like, guys, Taylor's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> like Taylor is gonna be like it, it's very invasive to yeah. sort of like assign a sexuality on someone. Like I just find it inappropriate and like you, but when you're famous, like people are going to talk about you regardless. Sure. And everything. But at the end of the day, like I, I don't think you have to worry about Taylor in this regard. You don't, you just need, it's, like, this is all about your friendship and the yeah. friendship you need to be like, this is a boundary I'm setting. We can't discuss this anymore. Yeah. It's not fine. And this honestly, to me, this is not this specific part of the email is not something to end a friendship over. But what is? But what is? The fact that your friend is actively not acknowledging your queer identity that you have been vocal and explained to her before, I think is the larger red flag of these two things. And I don't know if it's like if she's saying, well, since you haven't made a label, I just assume you're straight. Like that is a giant red flag that is kind of horrible like I don't get that yeah, at all I don't know if the friend is saying that or if the friend just like seems like the friend just like flat out forgot but, and but when it's kind of like girl weren't you listening it's that's my problem if you can make a whole list of who you dream Taylor Swift dated that's a woman and you can't remember you that, your, that best your, your best friend in real life is queer then you've got some <laughs> reorganizing of the priorities to do because like that is wild to me I guess you could remind her but the blockage of her not knowing that or not acknowledging you because you have not said I am X, Y, Z, put yourself in a box that she's requesting of you is very, very much a problem in my opinion. So I would definitely get that straight and be like, okay, how straight. But I am queer. It bothers me when you make a suggestion that I am straight and so I can't have opinions on things because I am a queer person and I have told you this. And there should be no more discussion of it. Please respect me and respect what I'm saying to you. And if she can't do that, I do think friendship ending is a possibility. Because it's sure. like, don't, you're not going to talk to me any kind of fucking way. Like, oh, no, sure. unacceptable. Sharon, uh, yeah, I, I'm I, I, I'm interested in this. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I mean, if you have a follow-up and let us know how it goes, mostly about the second part, because, like, the Kayla thing is so fucking dumb. But I just, not dumb on your part, but, like, that I don't get the passion, the rabidness around, like... Wanting it to be true. Like, right. if it's not... True, it's not to like. I mean, I guess like your friend really wants it to be true because like it'd be kind of hot. Sure, <laughs> like, they're both beautiful gals, and it'd be great for them if they were together. If they wanted to be together, sure. But and, but like, I, and I I realize I'm a person who you know has Mariah Carey as a part of their identity to the core. But I also know that I don't know her. Like yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. I don't actually know Mariah wow, did Carey. You, did you just I don't know her <laughs> to a, and about Mariah Carey? But not like I mean. <laughs> A you truly incredible I'm moment saying. here at Two Game I Hats. know that she's not my close personal friend. I know that like I, what she gives me is her music and her persona, and I love her from afar. But like her personal business is her personal business, and I'm not going to assign a sexuality onto her because that would be wild. Yeah, I mean, what if Mariah Carey did eventually like be like, "Hey, I'm in a relationship with a woman," oh, you'd be like, "Fucking great!" I like, turn, I would melt. <laughs> I'd be like, "Ah, oh, outside, I knew it." <laughs> I knew it the whole time. It's like, did you? No, of course not. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's all I have to say on the matter. Yeah, I guess. So Matt Steele, I have a question for you. Yeah. What's been giving you moments, darling? Not much. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's been nice. I've had a good time this yes. week. I will say, um, for the first time in a long time, I, for, for some reason, was not scheduled to work this Sunday. Ooh. This morning. Because usually my Sundays are my crazy days. I yes. work all day and then I rush up to Matt Palmer's and record this live stream. Um, and this Sunday, I was not scheduled, and I had a great morning. Good for I, you. I, for the first time in a long time, I did not set an alarm, <gasps> and I slept, Good and it was you. just amazing. And I was, I, I anticipated last night. I was like, I'm gonna go out and get things done. I'm gonna like get my car wash. I'm mm. gonna do a little bit of editing, mm. a little bit of writing. None of that happened. <laughs> I uploaded the Chatty Cathy's episode. But, That's what I did. And honestly, 
we all deserve days like that. I yeah. feel like as people who have multiple jobs, we always feel like the need to be productive. And there are some days where it's like, I will be lying here and playing Sonic all fucking day. And that's okay. Like that that's okay. allowed. Yeah. And so that's why maybe if I seem a little uh, less um, uh, burnt out in this podcast, then it's because I had a restful day. I love that for you. People are probably listening, being like, no, you still sound crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you sound great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I, I have an un naturally unhinged quality to me. Mm. I That's think. It's the thing. That's just a part of you. It's just a part of me. Totally. I should say that in my... Uh, Next Big Brother audition. Um, they'll, they'll probably watch the video and be like, yeah, bitch, we know. That's why we never call you in. <laughs> you never know. Next year could be the year. It could be the year. Yes. All right, Matt Palmer, what's been giving you moments? For me, I uh, just have to say I did watch the latest queer content that everybody's talking about. Oh. Red, white, and royal blue. God I, bless America God and bless. God save the queen. This is a movie that I watched with Jackson, and he actually had read the book kind of recently, and so he was very knowledgeable of the story. And uh, we watched it last night, and it was very, very cute. It was, you know how I feel about gay stories, especially ones about adults. <laughs> like, it's just, you know, as an adult myself, I, we love teens coming out, X, Y, Z, but like having... Like seeing an adult relationship, even one mm -hmm. as like fantastical as, you know, the president's son falls in love with like a prince from, you know, the Prince of England or whatever. I realize it's fanciful. Sure. But it still was a fun and interesting watch. Uma Thurman's Texas accent is something else. Yes, girl. Get him. <laughs> She's really swinging for the fences there. Um, the story is like. You know, a little bit predictable, but it's a rom com. It's like it feels good, and it was an R rated film. And so, well, of course, it was not explicit. There were like legit sex scenes of like, oh, this is this is a sex scene of in a gay way that like we don't see every day. I feel like a lot of people, um, I don't know, I was maybe surprised because of the lightness of the film. Otherwise, like mm -hmm. the fact that it had these moments that were clearly alluding to sexual acts, but it was like this is. Adult, like this is for adults. This is about adults. And as much as it was like a dream, like clearly the uh, Henry character who was the British uh, prince is supposed to be uh, Prince Harry. Like he's just like, well, actually I'm the spa. And it's like, I bet you are. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> it's very bad. You know, the, the writer and director and producer when that, that line was written, they were just like, yes. That's the thing. It's like, I wonder. <laughs> Everyone's going to love this. Right. And it's like, I wonder if it started out as fan fiction, like mm. a lot of these big rom-com, you know, film adaptations start out as, but I enjoyed it. It was very well made and well done and enjoyable. It was like a fun popcorn romance movie. The two guys very attractive. And obviously. you know what? We as gays deserve that. And we do. To sit there and watch and be like, oh, adorable. Right. Because I feel like people always, because I, you know, have my opinions on Heartstopper that are some, like are mostly positive, but just a few critiques. I feel like people think I don't like a low stakes, trauma free gay experience film. And I do. The stakes are pretty high in this. I mean, like they're literally like children's like it's head true. of state. I mean, my kid, when I'm president, my kids are <laughs> going to be fucking stressed. I mean, and that's the thing is she was running for reelection mm. and you know, in her home state of Texas, are oh, they going to vote for her man. now that her son's a queen, you know, who's to say? Who knows? I can't spoil it for you. Um, but yeah, and then also the monarchy, they're not looking for a, a little gay prince. They're What's going to happen for, they're there? They're not looking for nothing new. Not looking for nothing new. They want to follow the path. The you know, institution has been there for so long. It just was like, I, I enjoyed it. It was, you know, a fun film. And Uma Thurman's accent's wild. <laughs> so, Do you think something like that could ever happen to me? Which part? <laughs> Being Uma Thurman's son. Uh, no. <laughs> no, okay, that part is an, an absolute now. Okay, so the other part, yes, absolutely. Uh, I don't know. Well, you'd have to be either the son of the president or a British prince. So it's, it's leaning no now, uh -huh. but I'm sure you could fall in love with a British person. I foresee that. Okay. If, yeah. if I could, I like call him a prince. I could call my little prince. That could be my little um, term of endearment. If he likes him. that, but you don't like being called like a, a little, you know, strawberry bucket or whatever. A I little <laughs> strawberry <laughs> bucket. <laughs> Who's ever called me a I little feel like strawberry you bucket? You don't like infantilizing or like pet names or cutesy food related words. Um, I don't like it from. Someone who I just met. Oh, okay. <laughs> but if you're in a relationship, you'd be open. If to I'm in a relationship, a if someone wants to call me like a little strawberry bucket, <laughs> I would think that's funny. Great. Like my ex-boyfriend, I still have him in my uh, cell phone as Fuzzy Spider Monkey, and he still has me in his phone as Baby Bear. But oh wait, I I, really, <laughs> I need to stop and vocally say I 
hate that. <laughs> <laughs> you need to change that listen, as listen. soon as we turn we this were camera off. Co- we were in college. We were literal children no, in our first relationship. I understand that, but to still. Oh, you, so, oh yeah. I don't change no one in my contacts. You can change that name. <laughs> I am I am gobsmacked. I did not expect the end of this podcast to throw me for such a loop. Because again, we know that I love a delete. <laughs> but no, even I don't I, delete shit. Even if I, and honestly, in fairness, maybe I'm I'm not. I mean, I'm 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 cute in my ways and relationships. I wouldn't call myself cute C. Uh-huh. You know how Jackson's in my phone? Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is who they are. Just it's like, oh, it's clear. This is who's texting. This is who's calling. I get it. Yeah. It's not, oh, wow. I didn't realize this is where we were going. Because it's so much effort to like change that up. It's not. I can show you. We can do it right now. No, nah, we don't need to do it. <laughs> of course you, you know don't I want like to. memories. I like oh. I like going down memory lane, the nostalgia of it all. Shock. I am really shocked. <laughs> um well, I hope someone one day puts me in their phone as little strawberry bucket. I can see it. I yeah. can see you being someone's little strawberry bucket. Yeah, but like if back. someone approaches me in person and they don't know me or like haven't known me for that long and right. they try to infantilize me, I want to throw up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you'd like? You've told us a lot in these last few minutes, but is there anything else you'd like to tell the people? Nah. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching and or listening. We'll be back next week with more Two Game Mats, the podcast. Bye. Bye. But for me, I'm running for president. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow. I just haven't changed it. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's, not like I, the... it's not like I go back and like look at it. Yeah, I know, but you can you can change it. Yeah. What if you what if you saw him now and went in his phone and he had changed you back to Matt's? I guarantee you he has lost whatever <laughs> phone and contacts he had before and he really? does not have my phone number in his phone. You know, he's yeah. Oh. Whereas I have all contacts I've ever made. Mm. The author was a fiction writer, but the book itself wasn't. What? Uh, it was so cute. Oh, honey, it wasn't just alluding. <laughs> oh, talking about uh, the movie. Uh, Uma Thurman telling her child that they'll get him on Truvada was a thing of Oscar <laughs> glory. That whole conversation, like not to spoil, but at some point, you know, he comes out to Uma Thurman and you're expecting somewhat of pushback. And she it's essentially a slideshow of like, all right, now that I know, let's go through what you need to do and how we need to act. What are you bottoming? <laughs> and it's like, mm-hmm. it's like, oh my, Uma. <laughs> I'm sorry, my email, my heart was such a mess. Lauren, what are the deal? Lauren, what's the update? Wait, Lauren, which one was, are you the f- f- friend with the Gaylor? Yeah. Oh, well, then, Lauren, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that has been made clear that you are in the right and um, you're just really right. And I hope you did not get offended by anything we said. I'm sure your friend's a lovely person, but she needs to cool it. She's and she cool needs to it. acknowledge you for who you are. I'm sorry, I'm now just talking to Lauren. But I just tell your friend it's gonna be fine. Yes. Like, like, don't get so mad for. I mean, for saying that, I don't think she is. Like, it's not anything to stress about. Mm. It's not anything to stress about. There are way too many problems in this world right. than being dead than like desperately wanting Taylor Swift to be by. Right. You're in Lauren. You are correct. Yes. Yeah, Gaylor friends. <laughs> Hi there. I've missed you. It's been a hectic and you have made me so happy just seeing your faces and hearing your voices. I'm from Australia. What do you think of Delta Goodrun? Uh, I love you guys. Goodrun? I don't know. I think she's a musical artist, but I don't know. I don't know her. But <laughs> I'm sure she's great. I'm sure she's great. Uh, we still haven't talked. I, 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 you, if you want to be the first one to reach out, I think you're totally allowed. But yeah. yes, you deserve to be affirmed. To quote Austin, yeah, I would, and I, I would be, like, I would tell my friend, just be like, hey, I would lead with, hey, this is like a big problem that I'm having, like about me, like how you it, address me. They you both know? need to be addressed. <laughs> both those <laughs> items need to be addressed. Go in whichever order you'd like. Honestly, the way I would address the Taylor thing would just be like, girl, get over it. <laughs> Well, you know, it's more stop texting about it. That's what I do when friends text me about shit I mean, that same, like, same. I don't want to hear about. It's like, I'm not commenting on this. But anyways, gosh, midnight, you know? Yeah, Did don't, you hear you're stop, losing me? Yeah, just stop engaging with that aspect of it. But definitely tell your friend like, hey, like, I don't know if you remember, but I told but you, you. No, you can say, I don't want to hear about this. Like this Gaylor shit. It's not, I don't want to hear about it. It upsets me. I think what you're doing is wrong. But if you want to still do it, do it with someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the same as saying get over it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, Lauren, you are still on the right. We're all team Lauren here, so don't feel bad. Yeah. Um, not sh- sure they know Delta, but she's great. Okay. Oh, Grace can confirm. All right, Delta. Delta's great. I love a Delta. I love Delta Burke. Mm. She's great on designing women. Oh. I've never watched it, even though it's set in Georgia, right? Yeah. Oh. I've heard good things. It's great. Mm. Yeah. You also have never seen the Golden Girls I'm yet. Not. Which is... You, I, that needs to be I can do it. Addressed. I can do it. I watched uh, uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue. That's something. 
I think Golden Girls is a little more impactful in society. <laughs> but this is more timely. <laughs> sure. This is happening as Golden we speak. Golden Girls is always relevant. Get out of here. Yes, Team Lauren Team Hive. Lauren. What is up? Lauren Hive. <laughs> We're here for you, babe. We love, we love. Um, okay, what else is going on over here? <laughs> uh, it's so cute. You know, it's way more concerning. This uh, Michael Smith, this friend, sounds very extra. How do you forget a coming out is a great question. You know who that wouldn't do it? That is a great question. Uma Thurman. No. Nope. <laughs> Uma Thurman is going to remember that that young man came out to her. Uma Thurman was prepared for the coming out. She was like, these are the questions. <laughs> I know. She knew. And you know, that's a president who's prepared. I yeah. like that. Hello. I like that. Uh, also, by the way, uh, we looked it up today. We love everyone. Why are neither of those actors openly queer? I mean. <laughs> One of them, I think, doesn't comment on his sexuality. Okay. And so, fair. Okay. But it, it would be lovely if someone was openly queer. It would be nice. There are lots of openly queer actors. Yes, there available. are available. Not that they could promote this movie anyways, but you know what I'm saying. Like, A whole fuck ton. In fact, most actors I know. <laughs> <laughs> most actors I know. Uh, you know. I literally never text her about it because I just like the thing so much, but she'll text me about it. But yeah, I guess I could ask... You, for a firm boundary but I know she'll think I'm so un- well she can think whatever she wants to think the goal is that you don't hear about this anymore because it's wrong I would just be like girl I'm over it like stop texting me about this yeah uh, wait no golden girls take his gay card away now I'm going to get to it I bet those straights in red white and royal blue saw fucking golden girls <laughs> I don't know thank you guys great podcast oh thank you Tiffany thank you uh, apparently the main reason they got the R rating was because that mild sex, sex scene. scene credit Crazy to Jeff. Jeff. I mean, yeah, I mean, sex scenes will give you a rated R. And it was, I mean, it was like, sure. You're just seeing them above the waist. Sure. And I mean, but I think you saw, but again, that's, that's R. That's R. Like, yeah. That's, I don't think it's crazy that like a well, film with sex in it has gotten an R. Rating. I don't know if seeing a butt is R cause you could see butt on cable. They show butts on summer house. Oh really? They're um, night vision butts. I don't know if there's a I different level. I think like level. any act, like can you name a PG thirteen movie where there's like an actual sex scene, even if it is just like implied? It, like, yeah. Upper. I don't. I um, mean, I don't. I don't. I think, think if there is a sex scene, it is given an R rating. Was there a sex scene in like The Notebook? They kiss in the rain. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> but like, is there like an actual like that movie? I found the end of the notebook so emotionally manipulative. I've always felt that way. We were in the theater and it literally was like, I can't, I won't spoil it for those who haven't gotten a notebook in like 20 years. It's not a fucking but spoiler. But you never know. But I felt like the last little moment of that was like, if you're not fucking crying yet, you're a piece of shit. And I, it's like, don't do that. I cried. I, well, you know what I did? I was like, I'm not crying. <laughs> oh, the, the thing is, me. I was with my like a bunch of girlfriends when they saw it, and they were crying in the middle of the movie, like when the young couple was breaking up. And I'm like, this is nothing to cry about. <laughs> this is fucking nothing. Like we haven't established the emotional aspect right. of this yet. Why are we crying now? I mean, you remember when I saw, you remember my friend that I saw up with, right? Who didn't yeah. cry at the beginning and looked over and was like, why are you guys crying? It's like, Disgusting. It's just <laughs> shocking. Yeah, I will never forget the <laughs> that, beginning. I was like, that is the detail you need to know about this person. We love everyone. Sure. Yes. They show butts in superhero movies. Okay. If I'm being honest, I don't think my friends remember my identity because she was so busy figuring out her own. I think she viewed my comments as almost like a background into her journey. Okay, so she's self-absorbed. <laughs> this person's not coming across great. Yeah. I feel like just remind her and remind. say it's important that you know this. Yeah. Um. But the thing is, maybe the friend is like so self-absorbed that if you're like, hey, you actively forgot this and it made me feel horrible, the friend will be like, oh my God, and make it and, and be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, how do I rectify this? Because mm. me, 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 I have to be such a great friend. Sure. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if maybe that works. I'm thinking optimistically. It's good. It's good. Did you guys read Red? I didn't read it. I said that I, I liked it. It's cute. It's a cute girl. Uh, female butts get PG, males get R. Uh, we love emotional manipulation movies. Wait, but you love This Is Us, which is literally cr- called cry porn. It is not always cry porn. And I feel like the tears on every episode are very earned. It's not like event after event after event and like, all right, end of the movie. But no, we're going to add a little tag. And if you're not crying yet. I yeah. mean, remember that uh, uh, teaser trailer of This Is Us that came out? Which one? The original before the movie, like months before the uh, the series came out. I don't Everyone remember. was sharing that shit and being like, was... I'm already crying watching this. And it's like, why? You're not invested in these people yet. <sighs> but you watch that first episode. <laughs> you're like, <gasps> I don't want to be like sh- crying in the first episode. I need to build to the cry. But the th- it's, it's like a, it's not a multiverse, but it's like a time jumping thing. So it's sure. like you're seeing different moments. Okay. Well, if the first episode is really, really well done, it I guess well it done. could make you it cry. Is well done. It is. I have not seen it. 
I swear she's not a bad friend. The stuff is just difficult with her. I look, we're sure. not really, we don't know your friend. We only know what you told us. The stuff, the way she's treating you about this specific thing, yeah. I don't think it's I mean, right. it's fine. It's normal for friends to be annoyed with each other. He right. is annoyed with me every five seconds. It's I'm fine. not. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Oh, how we've grown. I know. How nice. Yeah. We also don't live together anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't that annoyed with each no, other when we, we lived together. We, we lived together. We were easy well. to live was, with. Yeah. We wouldn't have lived together so long if we were annoyed with each other. I've seen an interview they did with the guys from Red and, White and Royal Blue, and the American actor seems to be going. Way too hard to prove he's straight. He says dude and bro way too much. Who does? The American actor. Uh, Austin or Grace, we have a weird <laughs> comment coming. Okay. Uh, well, all right. Well, well we uh, love the passion. Goodbye, babe. You won't be here for a <laughs> while. Grace or Austin, if we could just jump on that. Get that wrench. Um. Yeah. No, we, we, we don't want a bad. Oh, bye. Bye. Wish you the <laughs> bye, best. Bye, sweetie. Oh, what were we saying about hate speech earlier? <laughs> yeah, damn. I mean, it's got a hold on people. Luke from Big Brother just arrived. I know. Thank you, Austin. We love, we love. Austin swooping in. Like I know. I, I, it's I, handled. What, what if one day neither Austin nor Grace or Mac, who else is a, I think Maxwell is a, a mod? I forget. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is time to bite the bullet and make Jeff a mod. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to be blocking people who disagree with him, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's time let's flood the chat with love no we're fine love, we're, please yeah, we can, we've been on YouTube for a decade you think <laughs> I, we've seen it all that, like it's literally every single negative comment we get I'm just like lol oh Sally yes yeah, Sally's a mod uh, but yeah we get negative I feel like we get I guess you'll have to make me a mod Jeff if you go wild with it though that could be chaotic I, really, I mean it always is it always is with Jeff uh, should have just blocked instead of timeout, but I was trying to click. No, you're fine. Eh. Then, th block after the timeout. Or right, can you do it now? It's fine. Who cares? No one got hurt. No one got hurt. <laughs> well, what do you all, all think of the alive. chicken? I, I thought the chicken was lovely. Oh, delicious. Oh, what a oh, what a perfect show. Was That that must have been Flavor of Love. Mm. Oh, great quote. I miss New York. Oh, I, and it, it literally, if CBS is not going to show like, like any sort of interesting characteristic right. of someone they're not going to put Tiffany Pollard on Celebrity Big Brother <sighs> that like CBS is like absolutely not we're not touching with that those with a videos pole. of her in I the UK's Big Brother house I'm just like should like can another network buy like Big Brother right and like take Big Brother maybe it should move to Bravo oh my god <laughs> it would be think of it like please it would be amazing please but the thing is like Survivor's still able to like be really entertaining I mean Survivor also it, like every uh, round is so condensed, mm, like it's right. only three days per like voting session. So like everything is so there's a lot you can pack into an episode. Yeah. Whereas Big Brother, like it's a little more spread out. Mm. But like, I, I some something's got to happen. I just like, do you think it is more fun seasons like this where like the live feeds are entertaining and the casting is entertaining? Or is it more disappointing because the actual episodes are so bad? No, I'm the thing is, it, the episodes have been bad for. A number of years now. Wow. Um, even when the feeds are really, really great. So I right. still have fun, but it's just, I like a part of me is kind of sad because I'm like, there are people who are not experiencing the complexities right. of like what is happening. Like there is so, there was, there are so many layers, like the gameplay that happened first week. Yeah. And CBS showed absolutely none of it. Instead, like in the live show, we got like a minute and a half after the first girl was evicted mm. um, of them just like hugging each other. And it's like this could have been pushed back and like had you could have had a minute sequence, edited sequence of something right. like relatively interesting. Right. Like, what are we doing? That's strange. Um, I also have to say for my Housewives watchers out there, Bryn had such a great episode of New York last week. I can't wait to watch her this week. I Love that she's biracial and going talking about her journey. And also, Real Houses of Orange County is fucking killing it. And justice for Heather Dubrow. All those blonde ladies are coming for her for reasons that are not true. She, like, is getting so much fire, so much heat, because she's talking about Shannon's relationship. But she's talked about all of this stuff off camera, and the other girls are doing it on. But Shannon is still most mad at Heather. It's like, I didn't share this with the whole world. All these other girls that you're very close friends with did. But I'm the one getting the blame. Luckily, Heather's always a step ahead. She's a little mm -hmm. bit smarter, a little bit more savvy. And this whole, like, we'll take down. It feels like they're trying to take down Heather. But it's never going to happen. Never going to happen. Justice for Heather Dubrow. Justice for <laughs> Heather Dubrow, guys. All right. Sure. Important. As president, that will be my, <laughs> oh my uh, what's it called? My, not tagline. My, um, oh, what's it called? The saying. Like, stronger together. Uh, 
It's not tagline. Not, uh, not log line. Um, <laughs> not, slogan. Not low slogan. Slogan. <laughs> slogan. Justice for Heather Dubrow. I don't think either of us is going to be president. No. <laughs> no. I mean, I would love a, you know, president little strawberry bucket. <laughs> <laughs> is Allison still producing BB? Yes, she is. Is she, is she the problem? I don't, I don't, I truly don't. I want to say it has to be CBS. Like mm-hmm. it has, because they know, like the producers of the show, like right. know, like, this isn't what it was. I, I I know that it's probably the network that's just like we can't show anything that is at all offensive right. in the slightest. Right. And um and if something does offensive happen, like what happened this week, like it has to really like be watered down. Yes. And um so so I guarantee you, like the people who work on the show who aren't like attached to CBS, CBS who are trying to appease CBS, yeah, are they know like right. they're just like this is. This is not. Yeah, this is not it. <laughs> Great sign, justice for whoever that is. I'm with Heather. Good. Do you know if that one housewife is actually dating Morgan Wade, Kyle Richards? My, I we don't know. My bet is no. It seems like she's just trying to be in the music video with her, which is fine. But isn't Heather the ally mom? She is. Her she has like trans kids and I believe a, a gay one of her daughters is gay, something like that. And she's a great ally. She's like Uma Thurman in fucking Red, White, and Royal Blue. Ready with the questions. Exactly. Here to help. Here to help. Not just her son, and but like, the country. The reasons they don't like her outside of this whole Shannon thing are like, oh, she's so condescending just because she's like, she she likes a big word. <laughs> and she talks about how she was a series regular on a t- network TV show in like 1998 or whatever. But she's not that condescending. She has fun with the ladies. She's just, a, you know, a, just a little bit smarter than them. And that's okay. <laughs> Smartness has range. Listen, sometimes you got a friend who's a little smarter than you. Yes. And if there's proof that they're smarter, then I will let them use their big words. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, guys, is there anything else you want to tell everybody? Uh, that I'm having a great time. Yes, we had a great time. We had a great time. With you guys today. Yeah, you guys are always wonderful. It really is. I'm so glad we had, you know, two hours together these I Sunday know. nights. If you want more hours, go to <laughs> www.patreon.com yes. slash 2 mats and listen to me and Travis talk uh, on Chatty Cathy's it's podcast very about fun. the most in- ridiculous things. It's very fun. We talk about like who that. our ideal celebrity thruples would be. <laughs> ideal celebrity gay thruples. Right. Yeah. I loved that part too. Like, it was shocking that neither of you could like think of a gay celebrity for such a long time. <laughs> I mean, hey. <laughs> but it happens. Yeah. All right, guys. We love you. 